Another loss, another win. Oh, go through it up again, again. Another day, another down, another way. Gotta get up. And I dip from those give up. And I see the millions in the mirror. Night is dark, it's for the brightest star. And now I see them all. Don't me slow down on crypto. She doesn't know this is it though. Need a vacation from the big show. Need a vacation from the get go. She told me slow down on my won't slow you down. I try to hold you down. My eyes are open now. I'm slow you down. Won't slow you down. Don't slow me. Don't slow me.
Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Disclaimer. Token Metrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker-dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Tokenmetrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, all right. Welcome, everyone. Ian Valina, your host. And today we have a great show, once again being joined by Bill Noble. The, the godfather of crypto over here at Token Metrics. Bill, how are you? Ian, I'm doing good. How are you? Amazing, amazing. I mean, uh, I was just telling you today is really a, a good Sunday in crypto. All right. I mean, because so many people were talking about how Bitcoin halving is priced in, the, the Bitcoin price is going to tank. And I mean, we, we were, I think, one of the few people who were pretty optimistic. I mean, so things are getting better and better for crypto. So today's show is titled Bitcoin Dip Buyers Being Rewarded. We'll, talk, we'll cover about Visa and the blockchain patent. We'll talk about Bitcoin. We'll, we'll cover Reddit launching its own cryptocurrency. So stay tuned. And we'll also answer your questions via the AMA. So if you have any questions you would like us to answer, please go to menti.com. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. And the code is 975104. That's 975104. Submit your questions. We'll also be taking questions from the Tokenmetrics forum at forum.tokenmetrics.com. We have over 400 people that have joined the forum. It's, it's, it's pretty good place to continue the discussions when we, we aren't live on the live stream. And if you haven't yet already, be sure to join Tokenmetrics. I mean, first of all, we've had a hell of a week, hell of a week. So just want to say thank you to all the supporters. The last two days for Tokenmetrics, we've had our biggest sign up. So thank you to all the crypto family out there. Anybody who's joined Tokenmetrics. Yes, thank you. I mean, so Saturday and Friday w was our biggest date yet in terms of people joining Tokenmetrics. We had over 200 people join the free trial back to back in the, in, the, in the last few days. So thank you to everybody out there who's in the affiliate program. And just really putting the word out there for Tokenmetrics. Big thanks to BitBoy Crypto, to Alexander Lorenzo, to Professor Crypto. I mean, just all, big, just all of our crypto family on board of Tokenmetrics. So, I mean, because we all know we've been working steadily building this up. And it's nice to see the traction, the growth, and just the success of the platform. Because that just shows us that people actually love the platform. So, for anybody out there, if you haven't yet joined, be sure to join. We do have 10% off if you use the coupon crypto family. That's all caps, one word. Just go to tokenmetrics.com. All right. With that being said, let's let's check in with the comments and see who was first. So first person, Dragon Ball Crypto. Welcome, welcome. Let's go. Great to have you on board. King Nick, what's up? B Kishore, how are you? Great to have you here. Um, Dragon Ball Crypto, Zishan Raz, how are you? Great to have you here. Ibo on Facebook. Hey, buddy. What's up? James Coleman. Always, always great to have you here, James. Vince West. Better than good. That's good. That's always good, especially here in crypto. Alice, how are you? Great to have you here. Mindblocker. Bitcoin almost 10,000. Yes, yes. The Bitcoin price is around 9,700. The Ethereum price is 207. So that's good. I mean, because lots of people did think that crypto would would dip uh but so far it, it's been holding on pretty well eric how are you great to have you here and tombi daku hi how are you mark welcome mark great to have you here as usual good day from australia cyclones how are you all right all right so this is definitely i think a very exciting time in crypto and we're very excited for today for today's show if you can't tell already so bill how are you and uh how's the how's life how's crypto well, you know, life is good. 
you know, I'm still, uh, I'm still here with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, how's crypto? Well, here's how's crypto. A lot of people after the Bitcoin having thought that there was going to be some huge dip and they wanted to buy the huge dip. And when everyone wants to buy a huge dip, there usually isn't one. It was kind of a small dip, right? And you had about, I don't know, you had like two days, three days, maybe before it turned around. So this to me looks like classic bull market, right? Crypto is a non-traditional market, but it's trending higher in a very traditional way, which is, which is nice, right? It's, yeah. it, event, it eventually starts mooning, but when you, when you have an uptrend, you want it to build up some steam, which is what I think we're doing. Well said, well said. I mean, and I think even just with us, like with our customers and our team, we're, we're pretty ecstatic because the token metrics models were pretty much textbook. I mean, because even though we're the ones here building the models, at the end of the day, we, we, we understand that, that they're machines and machines can be wrong. So to see how textbook, how the execution was, because the models basically were, were bullish. They, they, they said buy the dip when Bitcoin was under 4,000 on Black Thursday. I think it was March 13th, mid-March, once the pandemic kind of went crazy. And it really said buy the dip and it was bullish on Bitcoin and crypto all the way until a few days prior to the halving. And then after that, it basically said, we're changing from being bullish to neutral. And then lots of people were able to take profits, whatever. And then for, for I think probably one to two days, it turned bullish where Bitcoin dropped out of our top 10 moon index for, for basically two days. And that, that was really the only time frame where Bitcoin really kind of pulled back. And then the models after two days, brought Bitcoin back into the top 10 and basically saying that, okay, we think that the dump is over. Uh, and now Bitcoin has been pretty stable and things are getting better. So, I mean, I think it's definitely a big win for, for our customers, uh, especially big win also for our team, our development team, our, our analysts, and just really showing that, okay, you know what? Token metrics has been working. I think that's partially also why we've had our biggest week so far in, in terms of people joining, because people have seen how how well executed the model has performed during one of, I think probably Bitcoin's biggest moment of truth, because lots of people were saying, especially lots of traders were saying the halving was priced in, the halving was priced in, and we, we kind of went against the grain. So it's basically just good to see that if you have analytics and good research, you can always become a smart investor and make money. And, and most importantly, not lose money. Because as Warren Buffett says, rule number one is don't lose money. And rule number two is don't forget rule number one. Don't lose money. All right. So, uh, Bill, how about give, giving people a quick intro on yourself before we kind of hop into uh, crypto therapy and the show? Certainly. So I've been a technical analyst for a long time. Uh, I was sort of a break glass in case of uh, big moves or crisis. Uh, I did the dot-com boom with Morgan Stanley. I did 2008. 12 years with Goldman. Uh, I had retail experience for the retail investor at Charles Schwab, and I got my crypto cred from working with Charlie Schrem. And now I'm over here with Ian, uh, putting it all together. So we have fast moving markets that move a lot, and we're doing it in crypto, which is, you know, what we all love. So that's me. All right. Thank you, Bill. Some people are saying uh, the audio is doubled. Okay. I'll definitely try to fix that. Just give me one second. Sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, okay. Uh, can you just talk again, Bill, briefly? Yes. This is a test of the microphone testing. Okay. I think it's the issue might be with talk again, Bill. Sorry. Testing the microphone testing. Okay. I think I figured it out. Apologies for that. Let me, let me just take this out. Okay. So audio should be fixed now. Talk again, Bill. Testing the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Testing. We're all good. We're all good. Thank you, everybody. Crypto family in the house. Crypto family. All right. <laughs> okay. So I think we're, we're all good. Okay. So that, that was uh, Legato. Legato the Fox. Thank you so much for that. And also Cyclones and King Nick. 
Okay, so uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Ian Bellina, the founder and CEO of Tokenmetrics. Uh, I love analytics and data. Have been working in analytics and data for a while now. It's pretty much becoming my career. Uh, prior to that, I'm also a partner at 100X Advisors, which is a blockchain investment and advisory firm. We've made investments uh, at this point, almost losing track, but in over, I would say over 20 countries globally so and we also had a crypto world tour where we traveled around the world kind of kind of like a traveling shark tank investing in the blockchain and crypto space um, i myself personally have invested in probably over 70 cryptocurrencies uh, i've been in this space since 2016 prior to that i was working at ibm in analytics for four years covering big data at apache spark prior to that i was working as an it consultant at deloitte and my background is as an engineer. So if you ever see me kind of getting technical, uh, that's where that comes from. All right. So, so Bill, Bitcoin dip buyers being rewarded. Tell us about that. Okay. So just observing my own emotions, right? I saw Bitcoin, you know, rushed up and then came back to 9,100. And I'm like, I'm like, oh no, oh no. You know, don't start this you know, oh, it's over with the virus, so we don't need Bitcoin and having is priced in and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not buying into that. So there was this, oh, no trade. And then, and then Visa, okay. Mm -hmm. Visa comes out and says, you know what? We're going to get ourselves into crypto, Okay. And we think that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to follow. And all of a sudden, the guys who are waiting for the dip, the 7,400 said, oh, no, that was their oh, no. My oh, no, it was over. They had to do their oh, no and, <laughs> and get involved, right? And that's how we got to 9,700, okay? And then as soon as people figure out that e you know, Ether is leading now, okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's building up steam to go higher. That's good. That's good. Uh, I mean, so hold, so I've, here, I've just pulled up the, the article from Coindesk for those who haven't seen this article. So basically, Visa pattern filing would allow central banks to mint digital fiat currencies using blockchain. So Visa looks to be laying the groundwork for a future in which fiat currencies such as the US dollar could be easily turned into a central bank digital currency. Yeah, I mean, so this is definitely big for, for blockchain, for Bitcoin. I mean, because how many... How many big companies are going to join the space before people really start to take notice? Because central banks are, have been taking notice, Visa's taking notice, Samsung, Facebook, JP Morgan. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if people are still on the sidelines, I mean, they're going to miss this rocket ship. All right, uh, back to you, Bill. <laughs> right. In other words, you know, when people do earnings releases now, start thinking about that. This was a big thing in 2017, like CEOs had to start talking about both blockchain and crypto now, because again, as, as we continue to just print money, the latest is uh, 3 trillion coming out of Congress. So, I mean, if you don't have a blockchain or cryptocurrency project or connection uh, in the next three or four months, well, you might as well have a flip phone. <laughs> and, and your flip phone in your yeah. pocket and a rotary phone at home. You know, you, you're gonna be considered antiquated. A dinosaur. A, a dinosaur, right. So I'm old, but I'm in crypto. So I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be a dinosaur. And you know what? Need to do a lot of CEOs. And I think this is going to matter in a big way. Yeah. I mean, very true. Very true. Well said. Well said on that. Okay. So next thing I want to, I want to cover in, in the show. So Reddit has also issued their own cryptocurrency. And for anybody out there, if you don't know Reddit, Reddit is one of the most popular sites on the internet. I mean... I believe it's a top 20, one of the top 20 most visited sites on the entire internet. And they have basically issued their own, what's known as a loot token. Basically it's a, it's a community token. And this is pretty big for, for crypto because if one of the top 20 most popular sites on the entire internet is now issuing their own cryptocurrency and this cryptocurrency, so here, pulling up this article here from uh, Cointelegraph, Redis blockchain rewards will migrate to Ethereum by 2021. So basically, they have two subreddits. Uh, I think one of them is the cryptocurrencies subreddit. And the other one was, I think, some other 
crypto related one as well. But anyway, across those two subreddits, they have about 20 million users. So 20 million people will be essentially airdropped this cryptocurrency inside the Reddit app. So on the phone, there's a there's an actual Ethereum wallet where you, you go in there and they'll give you this cryptocurrency. So this can only be earned from using the platform. And I think this, in a way, is actually the future of cryptocurrencies because in a way, they, they kind of don't have to go through all the compliance and regulatory issues and nightmare that other projects who are doing token sales have to do. In this manner, they're basically issuing their own cryptocurrency to the community. Uh, and it looks like it's it's following all the different regulations when it comes to issuing their own cryptocurrency, right? The product has already been launched. It's usable inside their platform and, and ecosystem. There isn't really, it's not really available to be purchased. Uh, but then obviously we know it's crypto. We know people will still speculate uh, on this because people can redeem the cryptocurrency inside the platform for different perks. So whether it's uh, different, I think different badges or different things, but basically whenever it's redeemed, the cryptocurrency is then burned. So as a result, the cryptocurrency will be scarce. So just by supply and demand and basic economics, we know that there will be some demand for this cryptocurrency and people on DEXs will be able to sell this because based on the research we've done, it doesn't, doesn't appear like there'll be any restrictions on being able to trade or sell this. So I think this is pretty good and pretty good for crypto. What's your take on this, Bill? So I look at this from a lens of when somebody issues it like old fashioned equities, right? When somebody issues a, a token, it's almost like they're issuing like a stock or ownership in their, in their company in a way, right? In other words, if you have Reddit coin, you know, you can do more interesting things on Reddit. It's like you become invested in Reddit in terms of using it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the fact that these guys are going to issue their own sort of reward mechanism, which then can become Reddit money. And suddenly, because these big players are behind it, all of this thing about ICOs or scams or, you know, these are the new major altcoins, right? And if Reddit is successful at this, oh, then it's monkey see, monkey do. Everybody's going to have to do it. Yeah. Right? And right. then, you know, it, Bitcoin and Ethereum will become like the US dollar in the euro in the sense that, you know, in order to trade all your Reddit coins or whatever, you're going to need Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's going to flood the market with quality liquidity. Okay. In other words, the more the merrier. All right. So I've just pulled up here this, this nice uh, Medium article really going through. So, so the other subreddit is called Fortnite. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Cyclones as well. Um, so their token is called Moon Token. <laughs> so it, it's very fitting to crypto. So it's not, it's dollar sign moon, basically the, the cash tag moon, uh, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, so this says that there, there's a hard cap of 250 million tokens in a subreddit. There will never be more than 250 million moon tokens. And the moon tokens will be used to buy badgers, memberships, or for any other action on Reddit. And they are burned, meaning that they're destroyed once they're redeemed. And then the number of tokens issued diminishes over time. So it's basically de deflationary. So, I mean, this is a very, very exciting experiment. And if this takes off, I, I think as Bill said, monkey see, monkey do. Lots of people, lots of companies will copy this model. I mean, because quite frankly, this, this is a model even our team has really been researching because because uh, we also did see kind of this as being the future because lots of projects out there have now given up on creating and having an ICO and instead have been opting for just launching their token. So for example, Energy uh, by a good friend, Tommy World Power, he, he basically launched his own cryptocurrency that has my masternode staking, had no ICO, had no pre-mine, just really built up a community from the ground up. And we now think this could really be the model going forward because ICOs and token sales haven't really had the, uh, the, that bounce back like most, some people thought they would, right? Because people have been jaded with that. And it, I think really creating a cryptocurrency from the ground up that's community driven seems to be the, the way 
the future is going. And Reddit, I mean, I think this is definitely a good, a good example for others to follow. So definitely very intrigued to see how this is received and how this, how, how this performs. But hey, let us know what you think. Are you excited for, the, for this token, the moon token from Reddit cryptocurrency? Let us know down in the comments below. Okay, all right. So, uh, Bill, so earlier we were talking, so you mentioned that this is about blockchain and Bitcoin, and it's not really about just Bitcoin or just blockchain. Can you kind of delve deeper into that? Sure. So, you know, if you asked all the big smart CEOs in, in 2017, you know, what do you think of Bitcoin? The standard polite answer was, well, I'm a big believer in blockchain as a technology, but not Bitcoin. So crypto Twitter called it, you know, blockchain, not Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone's all down on crypto. Okay. Now I would argue it's blockchain and Bitcoin or blockchain and parentheses, you better have Bitcoin, right? Or crypto. So cryptocurrencies themselves have just had, you know, their shining moment, I think, with Visa, right? When these guys want to get involved, they just told you, they just added a stamp of approval to the big major cryptocurrencies to be used as money, right? Like Visa is not talking about it. I mean, Reddit is great. It's terrific. But Visa is like, we want to create crypto that people can use to pay for things, money, right? That gives the, uh, the money that's out there now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, just huge cred. Like it has cred with us, but when these big players start saying these things. Yeah. I mean, I mean so, and I think if we even go back further a few weeks ago, right? Because we had Reddit and Visa this week, and then we had Paul Tudors, a billionaire hedge fund investor, a legend on Wall Street, also getting into Bitcoin. I mean, so all these people have, are coming and joining the rocket ship, but we've been, we've been on this ship for, for a long time. So I, I th it's great to finally have them on board. And I think this is really what is required to take crypto mainstream and to get Bitcoin and everything. And all the times we've been waiting, because we, we're all believers, we're here for a reason. But now that all the other big players, the 800 pound gorillas in the room are taking notice, Everybody else will take notice and all of this will just propagate across the entire globe, right? I mean, so we're definitely long Bitcoin, especially this year. Uh, we, we can't really tell you where we think the price is going, uh, but we, we, all we can say is we're very, very bullish. Okay, Bill, so uh, let's, let's change over to crypto therapy. So as you pull that up, for anybody, if you have any questions for, the, for us during this AMA, please go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 975104, that's 975104 at menti.com. After cryptotherapy, we'll go through and answer your questions, okay? All right. Okay, but, uh, let me just check in here with the comments from, the, from YouTube. People talking about Dragon Chain being on the moon. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that project I thought was dead. So surprised by that. So, let me see. Consortia are creating silos around trade finance and letters of credit, says Emerald Ledger. Agribusiness shutting out all players on Hyperledger. Costs 2500 to trade per month. No place for small ICOs. Okay, not sure what that is talking about. All right. Uh, let me know when you're ready, Bill. All right, no, I'm I'm ready. It says you have to enable uh, screen sharing. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, my fault. Uh, not sure why that is. I guess update with Zoom. Okay, let me give you access. Okay, I have to enable video shit. Okay, not sure about that. Could, could you try now? That's the first time I've heard of that. Yeah, this must be some sort of Zoom update. Yeah. Don't you, okay. Don't you just love that? Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's um, let's let's talk through it. Okay. 
So let's start with Ethereum. Okay. Now, what has Ethereum been doing lately? Okay. It's kind of been going up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. And it looks sort of like an upward sloping cone, right? It's, it's been traveling like this, okay, for about a couple of months. And there was that one scary drop that we had to live with, okay? But then it's come back and is now over 200. Now, this process of sort of consolidating or, you know, it's building up steam it was actually made famous by a guy named Jesse Livermore, who was in a famous trading book called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Okay. And this guy identified this pattern that Ethereum is now doing. You know, I, I had a slide to show you, but, you know, trust me. <laughs> this type of formation, according to Livermore, can, pre, can basically preempt a parabolic rise. So the way I drew it out was Ethereum is going to start building up steam and start moving in what's called impulsive fashion, meaning it's like up, 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 sit, up, 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 you know, and I, I, I don't see, I don't see any reason why Ethereum, if it continues to hold, say above 190, can't get to 400. Okay. In Bitcoin. All right. Mm -hmm we use those colorful diagonal lines that people really like. Okay. And guess what Bitcoin did this week? It broke through, it came back, right? That was my, uh, Oh, and then it held right on one of those diagonal lines and came back. Okay. In other words, classic bull market price action. Okay. So I also think that we've got creeping into our top eight, on token metrics, we've got Zcash, okay? And I think Zcash is breaking out. Now, why is that important other than it's number eight on token metrics and rising? Because it's Coinbase listed, right? You know, our audience for the show and for token metrics may be international, but I think the American public, especially when you see headlines like, you know, $3 trillion going to get printed for an aid package, it is a question of time, okay, where people start flooding to Coinbase. Because remember, Coinbase has as many has as many accounts as places like Charles Schwab. Huge number of people that's with big. accounts. That's big. So I'm kind of looking at Zcash as my meter for hey, when are Americans going to go? Oh, I got to get in on this, right? And then Zcash has that privacy feature. So again. Um, we have all the good signs for a slow, steady buildup that eventually ramps higher, right? So we want it to go to the moon, but we want to get people in one at a time slowly and then have it moon. No fast moon then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, like, yeah, understand. You know, the, the 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 more you know, the more steam it builds up. It's like a coil in physics. You know, the more you wind up the spring, okay, the bigger the move when it goes. So uh, I'm all about this, you know, dip buying process where Paul Tudor Jones, Visa, you know, positive news flow is in favor of crypto. Right. Remember 2018, every week there was a new problem. There was a new issue. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like there's positive news flow each week. Yeah. And, and I think if you add on the pandemic and governments printing money with quanti quantitative easing, that's, that's just kind of adding fuel on the fire. Right. Because this, uh, this is really Bitcoin's defining moment. Bitcoin was designed for this. So, and it's great to see Bitcoin is now finally performing during this moment of truth. All right, but let us know what you think down in the comments below. Okay. Um, people are asking, so Menti code, Menti code is 975104. That's 975104. Go to Menti, M-E-N-T-I.com to submit your questions for this. Okay. Um, Anything else to, to cover on your end, Bill, with the, the, the TA? Uh, no, I think that it? does it. Uh, okay. I actually, uh, you know, if you, if you want to look at the charts, 
uh, I actually just direct okay. message you the PowerPoint. Okay. All right. Let me, okay. let me pull it up here on my end. Okay. What's your feeling on the future move uh, on XRP? So XRP had some a big news announcement this week, I believe. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but I think it was pretty noteworthy. But I mean, long term, we just aren't bullish on Ripple, to be honest. I mean, the XRP is. I mean, R Ripple is a great company. Like, don't don't get me wrong, but XRP isn't really. It's it's not creme creme de la creme, right? We think they're more attractive places to put our money in. All right, so I think I've pulled this up now. Uh, okay. All right, let me just go full screen. Okay, so we have your Bitcoin chart. Right, so with Bitcoin, okay, Ironically, I can't see the chart, but that's okay. I can talk to it, right? Mm -hmm. So with Bitcoin, you can see where I have that little arrow, okay, where it's breaking. It broke that diagonal line and it bounced off of it. Mm -hmm. And the next target is 10,700. Now, you, you might also be able to see if you look at the last time Bitcoin pressed the same diagonal line, it kind of hit it and fell apart. All right. So mm -hmm. the story has totally changed. All right. And if Bitcoin takes out, 10,700, we were talking about mooning. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's the moon number, right? In yeah. other words, fully taken out 10,000, you know, then I think you can start moving in thousand dollar clips. Okay. And now here's another reason. So if you go to slide two, you have Ethereum, right? And, you know, for our crypto audience, you, you can see this, this laughably old school diagram in the bottom mm -hmm. left that the guy drew with a pencil, right? I always have mm -hmm. my pencil. Was that you who drew that? Or, uh... Right. Well, no, it wasn't me all the way back in 1920 <laughs> oh, okay. something, right? I, okay. But <laughs> the, thing is, the thing is, all of these guys, all this work, William Gann, Livermore, Wyckoff, all these technical analysts from like the early 1900s, their mm -hmm. work is ridiculously applicable to crypto. I mean, it works great, right? Now, why is that? Well, because back in the 20s, equities were these was a highly speculative thing, just like crypto. Like, did you know in the 20s, there were 100 publicly traded auto companies because the yeah. automobile was just rolling out? Mm -hmm. So it was high time for speculation. So these guys came up with their own homemade ways of charting and managing volatility. And that now applies to crypto. Okay. So I'm a big Ethereum fan and I've been watching this and I've had to like play around with drawing this, but mm -hmm. I think the fact that, you know, I can now draw the expanding cone to the right means Ethereum can follow the pattern. All right. And the price action today, frankly, is going my way. Right. right. So if you go to the third chart, Zcash, okay, you've got these okay. diagonal lines. This, this only has two, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Well, that's okay. So, uh, but, we'll go. but uh, actually, it's fine because I, I do have it pulled up here on Trading View. I can pull it up on Trading View. Okay. So, so when it, when it comes to Zcash, I'm noticing mm -hmm. something similar to Bitcoin, where it's just taking out a resistance level that, you know, had sort of it had hit and fallen before. Yeah. You know, the Americans are. It, it's like it's like the rally cry. You know, the the Americans are coming. In crypto, <laughs> the Americans are coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's good. I mean, if, they, if they're bringing their money and they're they're buying our bags, I mean, we, right, right. we love Americans. Uh, you know, as a fellow American, why not? <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that, Bill. Okay, so let's check in here with our audience in the comments. So let me just pull up here the comments and see how we're doing. Okay, Iron Man says Dragon Chain has opened their blockchain platform for business and they're involved in a new movie with Atari and Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, that's interesting. I haven't heard about that. We'll have to look into that. Okay, Cyclone says anonymous news portal may get built on Zcash. That could be big. Yeah, that's, that's definitely big uh, if it is. I mean, so our, our team likes Zcash long term. 
we think is definitely one of the better privacy coins out there. That and Dash, Zcoin as well. So here, I'll just quickly pivot over and just kind of show you our top cryptocurrency picks uh, for day traders. So for, for anybody out there who's looking to be a day trader, these are the picks that Tokenmetrics recommends. Uh, for full details on this, please just go to tokenmetrics.com because we can't really delve deep into every single coin and do a thorough analysis. So this is just, so this is just our top 10 cryptocurrencies for this week for day traders. So meaning that you're looking to day trade or maybe worst case swing trade. So time frame would be a day to a, to a week or so, or maybe worst case a month. So, but a month or less is definitely the, the ideal time frame. So our top 10 cryptocurrencies using our machine learning algorithms, Zcoin, very, very bullish on it at the moment from, from a TA standpoint. Zilliqa is now at number two. Let's enter the, the top 10. Bytum, MadeSafe coin, Maker, Ravencoin, Dogecoin, Komodo, Insightchain, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is st still in the top 10, which is actually very, very good. So that tells us that models are still bullish on Bitcoin. Actually, if we drill down into Bitcoin, let's look at and see how the price prediction models are working. I haven't, ha haven't had a chance to actually look at this in a while. So I'm also curious to see how they're performing. Okay, so as we see here, this was basically when Bitcoin dipped, but now it's bounced back. And now it seems to be basically trending up or, or being stable. Now, the actual price is lower than the predicted price. The predicted price has been around 10,200. And it has Bitcoin basically slightly dipping and then going up so right now big has bitcoin being around ten thousand. then if we go all the way in the, in, the, in the next 30 days in a rolling 30 day time frame is predicting that bitcoin's price will be ten thousand seven hundred by june 13th um, then on the high end it can go as high as eleven thousand twenty six hundred. on the low end it can go as low as 99 as nine thousand nine hundred sixty four or on the super low end, as low as 9,157. So, I mean, our models have been pretty, uh, have been pretty consistent. Obviously they aren't perfect, right? Because nobody is perfect. If anybody tells you that, that's definitely a scam. But the idea with this is really just to have an idea of where the trend is going. And as you can see here, our models have been pretty consistent with that, which, which gives us confidence. But never use the price predictions as your only tool to invest or trade. They're merely just a, just a tool, a tool in your toolbox. So for us, to kind of recap, our, our entire model is we have a three-point checklist. So the first part would be, for example, if you're looking to do a trade, we would go here and find a cryptocurrency that's in the top 10. So basically a cryptocurrency that has a bullish technical analysis as well. So first checklist item, top 10 in tokenmetrics ranking. For day trading, then having a bullish or very bullish TA is a second checklist. And then the third would be having a positive price prediction trend. So we think if you have, if you, if you follow that three point checklist, we believe that you will find very profitable trading opportunities. And we, we believe that people will make lots of money by doing that. Obviously, not, nothing is guaranteed. Investing in cryptocurrencies is risky. But the entire point of having that checklist is to mitigate the risk when it comes to trading in crypto. Um, if anybody out there has been following that three-point checklist, we're definitely curious to see what you have to say. Feel free to share your, your results and your experience with that in the comments down below. Okay, all right. So let, let me just see what, what other... I think let's just hop straight into the, the AMA. I think that's, pre, that's pre, pretty much it for the the technical analysis. So if we switch over here, just give me, so here, first thing first, let's take questions from our audience on the forum. Just want to give some, some love to forum members who have been pretty active. Okay, all right. So this question comes from Adamar from our forum. If you haven't joined, go to forum.tokometrics.com. So he says, What's the best project to invest in under a dollar? So it says, so I have $500. I want to invest in the safest, highest, high risk reward project under a dollar. 
what do you suggest? <laughs> I mean, that's definitely quite the question. Well, I, I think before we kind of delve into how we would do this, I think there is a misconception when it comes to investing in crypto that does confuse lots of newbie traders and investors. So this is also why Ripple is very, very attractive and popular to newbies because they go in, they see Ripple has what is this price is 30 cents or lower and they think, oh man, this is, this is third or fourth in market cap. I mean, I mean on the on coin market cap and this price is very low. It must be a good project. But I mean, quite frankly, this, this is something I also had as a mistake when I joined crypto and somebody had to kind of pull me aside and teach me about valuations and market cap. And the thing is, it's not the price that matters. I mean, yes, the price is a factor, but it's about the, the, the total valuation of a company, its market cap. So if we go here to token metrics, as I pull it up here. So Ripple is in our system. Let me pull up Ripple. So Ripple's price is 20 cents, which is low, and it seems sexy. However, its market cap is 8.87 billion almost nine billion dollars is ripple's market cap so you, you're not looking about the price going up so for R ripple to do a 10x its market cap would be over 80 billion almost 90 billion in market cap now what's the likelihood of that happening right because if we look at purely market caps i mean bitcoin's market cap is 178 billion so for ripple's market cap to shift that quickly is highly unlikely Yes, it's possible. Don't don't get me wrong, because it, it did happen back in the last bull run. However, it's more realistic for a, a slower a lower cap coin to do a one x or ten x, and just to have a larger re return because it has a lower market cap. So, for example, if we take something like Matic Network, its market cap is only about seventy million. So, it's more realistic for Ma for Matic Network to go from seventy million to a 700 million market cap basically a 10x this is assuming there's no additional inflation or tokens entered in, into the supply than it is for a company or cryptocurrency to go from from where it was so xrp was about 9 billion to 90 billion so that's something i think people have have to factor in now if we go back to the question the question was uh what cryptocurrency is good to invest in that's under a dollar. So one of the cool things about token metrics is we can add filters. So if we add a filter here, let me see if this works. Okay, so this is showing us cryptocurrencies under a dollar. And if we sort this based on rank, these are the cryptocurrencies under a dollar for day trading that token metrics likes. If you like, if, if, you, if you want to see the value investor, just go to tokenmetrics.com and, and join for a 14 day free trial. But for day traders, meaning that trading for one day could also be swing traders with a time frame of a week to a week, I mean, to, to a month. So Zillica, Bida, Madesafe, Ravencoin, Dogecoin, Komodo, Insidechain, Blackstack, Helium. So these are the cryptocurrencies out there under a dollar that our models like. Now for Valley Investor, I think that that's really where the 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 money is in my opinion because day trading you, you do lose money going in and out and it is more speculation if you're a value investor with a longer time time horizon i definitely recommend you go through tech metrics and just filter through based on price uh bill uh, any comments or thoughts on investing like this sure okay so this is a this is a common theme in cross equities right people who come with small amounts of money, and then they want to play in penny stocks, right? Mm -hmm. So I like to think of it as simply as I can, right? Things like Coinbase are probably going to have lower priced instruments that are of a higher quality or they wouldn't be on Coinbase. That's just a guess, right? Not investment advice. Mm -hmm. So there actually are two relatively low price currencies on Coinbase. There's CRX, which correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's a decentralized crypto exchange. Mm -hmm. And then there's my favorite Tezos that takes advantage of the proof of stake concept that's only two something, right? It was three something and it went down to one something. It was at one something at, at a point. 
Okay. So if you're looking to, you know, if you're looking for that 50 X, you know, those are two possible candidates. You know, if you want to dream the dream and, uh, you know, like my, my, my dream, the dream token is decred, right? Decred. Yeah. Right. I'm always bringing that up from time to time. So, but the thing is, if you need lower price things because you don't have a lot of money, then maybe stick with lower price things where there's some liquidity, which would be say on Coinbase. So that was yeah. just my two cents on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Coinbase, I would say Coinbase is definitely one of the better exchanges out there in terms of vetting what cryptocurrencies they list. Now, with that being said, we, we definitely do recommend you use research platforms and tools like Tokenmetrics or just, just research before investing and always make sure what you're investing in is liquid because something could be a great, a great project, but if it ends up being illiquid, that's almost the same as losing all your money. <laughs> I mean, because especially in 2017, I know lots of investors, myself included, who got into products we thought were great, ended up being illiquid. And as a result, they ended up being bad projects. So because at the end of the day, there's so many risks when it comes to investing, not just risk with the investment, but you have liquidity risk, as Bill mentioned, you have uh, team risk where the founder just quits, like we talked about last week with the Loom Network and also Cosmos. I mean, so even the good products, if something, if, if, if a founder just pulls a Dave Chappelle and just goes to, to Africa for, <laughs> and does not come back, I mean, I mean, anything is possible. So even with great investments, you always have to be cautious when it comes to investing and or trading. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, next question here from the from the forum. Let me pull it up. Just give me one minute. So lots of questions on the forum are money related, which does make sense. Okay, so this question is 1 million in crypto. What would you do if you make $1 million in cryptocurrency? Explain briefly. Okay, so he's basically saying, what would we do if we made a million dollars from investing in cryptocurrencies. Um, okay, so I've kind of done this from, from, from the last bull market and I have lots of mistakes and things I would do differently. Uh, but before I cover that, uh, Bill, what's your take on this? What would you do if you made a million dollars in crypto? Okay, so the COVID-19 situation has changed at least my answer, right? We would talk about doing diversification into gold, real estate, okay. Forget about it. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what, what would you uh -huh. do with a million dollars in cryptocurrency profits is buy uh, more cryptocurrencies, different ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you would actually, you know, try to do some homework and speculate or leverage what you had to buy more of the high quality stuff. Okay. And then of course, there's the whole idea of a, you know, a bunker in Zurich or, Canada, Nova Scotia, Idaho, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. far away, uh, where you could enjoy nature and not be near any people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I know that's morbid. I'm trying to smile as I'm saying it, but, uh, yeah. you know, you, uh, the, you know, you, you would want to have, uh, more cryptocurrencies and a comfortable backup plan. Let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, I think that's definitely fair. Uh, definitely uh, interesting perspective. Now I'll kind of share my story and I'll share what I've learned, what I would, would do differently. So I be, I made my first million in crypto December, 2017. I was with my friend Ugo Han. We were in Tokyo on a crypto world tour, the, the, basically pretty much kind of the, the first leg. We we're there visiting Telcoin. Uh, for those who recall that crypto, that ICO from 2017 that ended up doing a 10x. And I mean, we felt great, uh, but we were young, we were naive. We thought crypto was the future. It would never stop. We thought, oh man, we were so right. This rocket ship is not going back down to earth. We should just ride this out. So we thought Bitcoin was going to go to 100,000. I mean, to, to show you how naive I was, I literally thought, I could just become a billionaire by flipping shit coins. And I mean, I mean, put it in my French, but 
I thought I could become a billionaire by just flipping these ICOs indefinitely. <laughs> I mean, now looking back, it was just so naive, so reckless. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I did cash out. I mean, I, I cashed out over half a million. So that part, I did kind of do well. Uh, and I, the plan was to cash out even more and buy my, my family a house. So my, my goal after making a million was to basically buy real estate. Uh, but obviously, for those who follow me know that I ended up getting hacked uh, in spring of 2018, lost about two and a half million at that time. So that, that was something unexpected. So going back to what I talked about earlier, there are always risks in everything, right? Whether it's investing risk, liquidity risk, mine was security risk and just personal risk, right? Uh, but I would say definitely, I think for me, definitely diversify into other assets. Uh, so if I could go back and kind of tell myself, okay, what would I do differently? I would say uh, stay humble, be re realistic, uh, kind of as Ron Buffett says, when other people are greedy, be, f be fearful. And when people are fearful, be greedy. So I would assume if I'm making a million in crypto, I would assume that we're in a bull market again. And when e everyone else thinks we're going to the moon and beyond, I'll be very, very fearful, right? So I wouldn't quite go out there and get a bunker in Alaska. However, I would take some money out of crypto, put some money into other assets, I'll put them into cash flow positive assets, assets that give you cash flow. So whether it's real estate or commercial real estate where people are basically paying off your, your mortgage and they send you a check every single month. I have also looked into buying businesses. There was a book I read uh, last year but from Harvard Business Review about buying businesses. Basically, it's kind of like with, with crypto, buying, but buying businesses that give you cash flow. In a way, it's kind of private equity. So that's something I think I would definitely dabble in. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably buy a business, I understand. So I'm a techie, I'll probably buy something tech related or something that deals with media because I do understand media that can bring in cash flow. Because let's say crypto goes back down and we go into a bear market again for two or three years. Because typically I think in Bitcoin, every bear market has lasted longer than the prior bear market, right? So basically when we're having our Kumbaya and going to the moon and beyond, the bear market that will follow that will be typically longer than the bear market before that. So I'll basically buy low, sell high, right? So I would sell in a, in a bull run. I, will, I, will, I, will, I don't think I would sell everything. I'll would, I would just take out at least my initial and maybe some other money and just have some funds stored away for a rainy day so that when crypto dips again and we go back into a bear market, we're basically there buying the dip. So, and I think that's really a cycle somebody would have to follow. Now, I'm still bullish on crypto. I'm just saying we have to have perspective when we're going to the moon and beyond because it's not just one one line. It's basically we go up, bounce back down. Go up, right? It's, we're basically getting higher highs. And, and I think that's really the perspective to have. Um, any thoughts on that, Bill? Do I sound crazy? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Actually, what you're describing, um, you know, back when you were on your tour, you know what? I, I didn't know you back then, but uh -huh. you know, you weren't naive, right? Uh -huh. the, the sensations you were feeling were they, they were in NASDAQ. They were, they've, they've happened historically. Mm -hmm. And that was just your trading education. Mm -hmm. Simple as that, right? Yeah. And, and how long, you know, that trading education will last you your lifetime. Okay. So that's invaluable to have had that experience. Um, yeah. You know, you know, when it comes to things like, you know, real estate, you know, you got to be careful with commercial real estate, people walking away from rents. Yeah, we're, we're especially entering, this market. We're, we're, we're entering sort of this really unusual era that, yes, crypto could go up. Yes, of course, crypto will dip. Uh, but what if it doesn't? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why, yeah. you know, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, okay, Bitcoin's going to go to a hundred thousand. Okay. I, I, I'm cool with that. I'm in the business, mm -hmm. but what does the world look like if Bitcoin's at a hundred thousand? I mean, am I wearing a biohazard suit on the show? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I mean I'm uh -huh. not trying to be morbid. I'm just saying yeah. you know, the diversification 
now goes from gold to commercial real estate to toilet paper, beef jerky, et cetera. Yeah. Right. It, it right. has a bigger spec. <laughs> okay. I, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so. Obviously, I don't think it makes sense to sell all your crypto. I think you should, because crypto is going to, we think crypto could go to a million dollars or more. I mean, I mean, I mean, Bitcoin. Bitcoin can go to a million dollars or more. So obviously, don't sell all your Bitcoin. But I mean, I, I think for me, I think being able to does takes the money off the table. So if you're planning to pay off your your mortgage, your loans, do something tangible with your money so that when there's that pullback, you don't kick yourself that, oh man, uh, you know, I had so much money. I, I didn't pay off my student loans, my mortgage, my car, my tuition, a house, vacation, whatever, right? Beginning a new business. I mean, so with me, I basically took, took the profits I made and basically launched token metrics in a way, right? So in a way, it's still crypto. But in a way, it's also kind of diversifying myself inside of crypto because now I have an actual business that's generating money that's tied to crypto, but also not tied to a particular token, right? So uh, there's so many ways. I mean, I'm also bullish on gold. I, I think, cause as we've talked about in past shows, gold has performed pretty well during the, the pandemic, but Bitcoin has performed even better. So I, I definitely would have some... I would just spread the risk, spread the risk, because basically anything can underperform, whether it's the economy, stocks, equities, whether it's Bitcoin or crypto, whether it's gold, whether it's real estate, I would just spread the risk. But I would still have, I think, probably most of my investment in in crypto or Bitcoin. I mean, if I did sell a large amount, it wouldn't be because I'm bearish. It would be because I'm seeing lots of greed and I'm just ready to buy the dip. At a, at a cheaper price, right? Because as uh, an investor, I like Howard Marks says, you basically want to buy from pessimists and sell to optimists. So going back to the question, if I've made a million in crypto, uh, I'm assuming that's from a 10x or 100x return. I mean, that means we're definitely, we, we have more optimists than we can handle. And that's the best time to sell because the worst time to sell is to pessimists because that's when you get the worst price. But I think it's definitely a good question. Let us know what you think. What would you personally do if you made a million dollars in crypto? Uh, how would you take profit? What what other investments would you make? Let us know down in the comments below. Okay, uh, so that was a good question from from Robo Crypto Two. So he he was actually one of the people who won a Tokenmetrics Forum award. So it's uh, it's, it's great, great to see him with that question. Okay, so here's the third question from our forum then after this we'll go to the ama from from menti once again the code for that is let me just pull it up here 975104 this 975104 we'll answer your questions from there so next question here from the forum what is the best way to get people in poor countries and communities to use crypto so this comes from adamar again i am from angola and the banking system there is a thousand times worse than the banking system here in the US. How do you get people from third world countries to use crypto as an alternative to traditional unreliable banking? Okay, this is definitely a, a good question. Uh, Bill, uh, any comments or thoughts on this? You know what, this reminds me of when I went to the Texas Bitcoin conference in the summer of 2017. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody there from Zimbabwe, I believe, was the country that was experiencing hyperinflation at the time. And this guy, I think, did almost what Charlie Shrem did a long, long time ago, was kind of started his own Bitcoin or crypto brokerage house, right? Mm -hmm. So in order, for a, in order for a country like, say, Angola to have people start using crypto, because it's so digital and unusual, people actually need to walk into a storefront and talk to a person about doing it. And you're like, wait a minute. Oh, dude, it's all online. We're all on Zoom. Yeah, I know. But I know somebody in Bitcoin lending in Austin and people who are new want to talk to a person. They want to know them, shake their hand. So, you know, you almost need to have, you know, it's the dry cleaner, the the Chinese restaurant, the cryptocurrency, you know, who knows, maybe it'll be a token metrics branch one day, 
wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice, right? So you need you need a storefront. You need a storefront where people can get education and execution, right? Like, how do I get involved in this? Who am I giving my money to? And do I trust them? And then they can start merchants, can start taking it. Consumers can start spending it. But there's got to be something at the location. Like when Bitcoin first started, they, they set up these shops in New York. Yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely well said. Well said, Bill. Now, uh, my perspective. So, first of all, I mean... I, I was born in Uganda, a, a third world country. Uh, I've been there, back there twice, uh, last two years, and had blockchain events and spoke there. And I've been to Africa back in 2018 during our Africa crypto world tour. So went to Ghana, Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and we gave blockchain events. I mean, we gave blockchain talks and had a chance to really meet people there who are using crypto and Bitcoin and seeing how they're using it. And the main prominent issue across all of Africa was just onboarding people onto crypto, fiat gateways, fiat on ramps, basically exchanges, because most people were either going and buying crypto in person through different sellers. And not every country had an, a, an exchange like Binance. Like, and that's why I was very pleased to see now Binance is operational in Uganda and Nigeria. And now I think other cryptocurrencies exchanges are also coming into Africa, but for the most part, Binance has has done best by being early in Africa. They also have the Binance Charity Foundation, which is doing lots of work in Uganda and in Africa. Now, going back to the question, how would we get people to use crypto? So, I mean, for me, I'm a I think like an engineer, so I feel like numbers really can push people and really motivate them because. People won't really change unless they have a motivated reason to change. And I think if you just go to a person in Africa and you just say, okay, let me show you your local currency and show how much inflation is affecting you. Um, so let me see if I can pull up a local currency here. Just give me one second. So maybe if we can add South African, the RAND, uh, USD RAND. Okay, I don't think they have that. Uh, so I'm here pulling up, okay, here we go. Okay, so here's the South African local currency. So let me just uh, hide all of this, just to make this easier. All right, so basically the US dollar is up 26% on the South African Rand. This is just this year alone. So if you tell the person, you're basically losing money just by holding your local currency i mean and you just tell them are you do you plan to be able to provide for your family in the future or to 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 store your wealth well your local currency is not the place to store it because looking at this i mean your currency is is, is losing you money every single day and then if we go back to one year the dollar is up 29 percent if we go to five years, I mean, this is off the charts. I mean, if we can, so the okay, the, the dollar is off. Yes, it's not even showing me the right time frame on this. Let me, let me just see if I can. But anyway, I mean, you guys basically get the picture. If we add in other currencies this year, so if we add in uh, the Mexican peso, dollar is up twenty seven percent versus that. Um, if we add gold gold is has done pretty well gold is up 13 percent this year now if we add bitcoin bitcoin is up almost 40 percent versus the dollar now i think this is this is what really should be able to sell this to anybody i mean because if you tell them here look your local currency the dollar is up 31 percent versus your currency in south africa for example right while Bitcoin is up 40% to the dollar. So meaning that if you put your money in Bitcoin as opposed to the South African Rand, you'll be living like a king. I mean, I don't know. I don't care who you are. I mean, what if you just do this, you'll be living like a king or a queen in your local country. You'll be basically making money just by avoiding your local currency. 
This is why I think Bitcoin is the future, especially in developing countries. And th this to me, I think, is probably the easiest way to sell this to people. Because especially if they're in a third world country or developing country, they're already feeling the the exposure to their local currency, whether you're in Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, South Africa, Uganda, anywhere, you especially during the pandemic, your local currency has been hit a lot because people have been fleeing the local currency. So things have been getting more expensive. So well, the, the, they're going through inflation and maybe down the road, even hyperinflation. So people are actually feeling this by going out, trying to buy groceries. And if you told them there's an there's a way out, there's an option out, that's very simple. That's very straightforward. Just buy Bitcoin, leave your local, local currency, store your money in Bitcoin, and buy more Bitcoin, buy things in Bitcoin, or or, or just even a stablecoin. Just but just use Dai or Tether. That alone in itself will save your wealth. So I think that's how we get people to do that. But to force people to do that, we have to have more exchanges available that onboard people onto crypto. So that's why there are, there are platforms out there like Paxful that, that are, are pretty prominently used in developing countries. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. This is in no way, shape or form an endorsement for Paxful. I myself have never used this, but I do know lots of people in developing countries do use this as a way to, to buy Bitcoin. Um, obviously, if you, you, you also have crypto exchanges as well. So this is, this is one example, right? Paxful.com is a peer-to-peer -peer platform. So it's not really an exchange. You're buying from other people, I believe is, is the way it works. So if you find somebody in your local region, you can basically buy from them. You also have local Bitcoins. That one I think is more sketchy. I've never used it, but I've heard so many bad stories. Uh, and it's also been, yeah, it's, it's been in the news a lot for for not so stellar reasons. Uh, I would say search locally. Maybe there are some local vendors that are trustworthy. Uh, maybe go to your local Bitcoin meetups or crypto meetups. Just search whether meetup, meetup.com or just other platforms and find people in your area who are in crypto and Bitcoin. And maybe even use, use that, right? Maybe you, you send people money via M-Pesa in East Africa and they give you Bitcoin, right? But there are definitely ways to get onboarded into crypto and Bitcoin and to just store your wealth. So going back to the question, I think that is probably the best way to get people in poor countries and communities to use crypto. You just show them they're losing out by not using crypto. Um, and I think that's really the, the way to go. But let us know what you think. Um, any other ideas, anything we missed? Let us know in the comments down below. All right. Uh, how are we doing on on time, Bill? Uh, how long do we have you for? Do you have to head out soon? Uh, oh, we're, I'm good. Good? I'm good. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that's that. Once again, if you want to submit your questions ahead of time, just go to forum.tokometrics.com and we'll answer your questions there. Now we're going to, to the AMA itself. Let me pull this up here. Wow. We have lots of questions here. Lots of questions. Okay. All right. So first question. For the AMA, how does an Ethereum 2.0 delay affect the crypto market? So I'm assuming he's, this comes from the comments Vitalik Buterin had this week, where he basically said that he misspoke. Uh, I don't know how somebody could misspeak, uh, but let's just give him benefit of the doubt. Uh, during an interview, somebody asked him whether it was launching July 2020, and he didn't hear the part that, that said July. Uh, but I think... First of all, we're bullish on Ethereum, so let's kind of, kind of just get that out of the way. Bullish on Ethereum, long term, Ethereum has been performing pretty well. Uh, earlier in the show, Bill said that the technical analysis on Ethereum is pretty good. I think a delay would definitely hinder things short term, but I don't think it's going to affect anything long term. I think Ethereum 2.0, all of us are, are, are still pretty optimistic and bullish on it. Our developer, Paresh Munsani, he loves Ethereum 2.0, uh, but just to kind of play devil's advocate, I was watching a video by uh, Charles Hutchinson, uh, who's basically the the I think is a founder or spokesperson for for Card Cardano Ada, and he was saying that he doesn't think ETH 2.0 is going to slow down or make Cardano useless. Uh, he thinks Cardano will still perform well. And he still believes the technology does well, and he actually did comment saying that he believes he believed that. 
they were going to delay Ethereum 2.0 just based on the statements they had earlier in the year. So it is kind of surprising seeing that that has turned out to be right. Uh, but uh, Bill, what's your take on this? Do you think this will affect Ethereum from a technical analysis standpoint? Well, it already has, right? Ethereum hasn't done much um, because we're literally all sitting around waiting for the computer people to do their thing. <laughs> all right, so, so given that uh -huh. that's not my area of expertise, mm -hmm. right? Ethereum is a proof of work currency and the SEC says it's not a security, it's a currency. So unless you think Ethereum is going to get taken apart by a quantum computer, which I see as very, very, very unlikely, Ethereum's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're migrating to a proof of stake model, um, you know, this guy, he built this thing, right? I mean, somebody had to wake up in the morning and say, hey, let's build Ethereum, <laughs> you know? So if the guy misspoke, okay, well, he misspoke. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. he went from nobody to somebody because he had an idea and he stuck with it. So if he says there's a computer problem, you know what? I think I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he made Ethereum, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not some guy in a diner. Right, right. Right. Yeah, true, true. I mean, so, yeah, I mean... It's, it's kind of hard to say, but I think, yeah, we're basically just waiting around to see what happens. So, but I don't think it's going to be too bad of an effect, but a uh, good question. Good question. Let us know what you think in the comments below. All right. So moving on to the, to the next question here. Okay. This seems like this, this is a question we get a lot. Let me just see if we can. Okay. So. Question is, do you think Matic and Blockstack have the potential to do a 100x return in the next bull run? Um, obviously, I mean, first of all, we'll just preface that by saying investing in cryptocurrencies is risky. This is in no way show any kind of financial advice. Uh, with that being said, though, I mean, we are very bullish on Matic Network. We are bullish on Blockstack. We think there there are good cryptocurrencies with low caps that are good for a low cap value investor. So somebody who's looking to have exposure to low cap coins, by, but still also have a value investing approach, right? Because these, these are cryptocurrencies that we think have good fundamentals, good technology, and can perform well in the long term. Now, for the long-term ratings, please go to tokenmetrics.com to view the long-term ratings. Uh, but ha they have been consistently in our top 10 to top 20 uh, ratings for long term. And that isn't really going to change much. Uh, it's really just changes primarily based on the entry point from a technical analysis standpoint. But those are projects we, we are very bullish on. So if we go through here and just go through their current market cap. So Matic Network has a market cap of about 70 million. For it to do 100x, it would have to go to a $7 billion market cap. Now, even though I like Matic, I still think that's highly unlikely. Uh, but long term, anything is possible, obviously, right? Uh, but I, I would say if it, I think a 10x is more reasonable in, in about a two year time frame. But it is crypto, things do happen drastically. Uh, a $7 billion market cap, I think, is very unlikely. I, I think all of crypto would have to like just blow up, insanely blow up. And I, I don't think that's going to happen very fast. I think it's going to happen gradually. So maybe I would say maybe in 10 years, sure. But uh, in a few years, I mean, I think that's, 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 I find that hard to come by. I think more of like a 10x, maybe like 30x return, possibly. Now, if we go to Blockstack, that has a market cap of about 50 million. If that goes to 100x, that would be a $5 billion market cap. Right. So actually, I think I think that that is possible. Five billion dollar market cap. OK, so let me just go back here and sort by market cap. OK, so let me re reset the filters and take those filters off. So. Five billion dollar market cap, I think that that is possible. 
but it would really have to to blow up as well. I think if that happens, all of crypto is going up. Obviously, not not every altcoin is going to go up, but I think if crypto does a hundred x, I think it's possible. But I think I would say actually, if crypto does a ten x return, if the entire market as a whole does a ten x return, I could definitely see where Blockstack could outperform the market and get a hundred x return, uh, because Blockstack is its own blockchain and it has good technology. We're very bullish on it, but it is still unlikely in the short term. I think long term possibly. Uh, Going back to Matic, I think Blockstack has would have more potential than Matic because Matic is an infrastructure project, and historically speaking, those have not performed as well as layer one pro, uh, layer one protocols. Layer two protocols typically underperform layer one protocols. So because of that, I think Blockstack would be my favorite out of those two from your question to get a hundred x return. But even that is highly unlikely and, and possible, especially considering the fact that Blockstack has early institutional investors that will have their tokens unlocked. So there will be some additional selling pressure. So it will take some time for Blockstack to really uh, increase in value. But with that being said, if I had to pick between the two, I would pick Blockstack. And I think Blockstack could possibly do that. I think it would, my time frame would probably be five years or so. Uh, but that, this is all pure speculation. Obviously, I could be wrong. Uh, I'm just kind of speculating based on the information and data we have. All this could change as we get new data. Um, what's your take on this, Bill? All right, so let's go back to uh, last year and Matic Network, right? So mm -hmm. Bitcoin wasn't really doing well, and any but but Matic was right. Matic was just kind of going up and up, and then all of a sudden, Matic lost half its value. Okay, the first and crash, I, right? And I was in college at the time when equities crashed in '87, and you know. I was just starting in economics, but I didn't really understand what was going on. And I called my dad and I asked him if, if this meant I was going to have to like come home from college and, and not go to college because of what happened. He's like, no. So he, he assured me that that was not going to be the case, but the pain trade in Matic, just like my pain trade in my dorm room, mm -hmm. okay, was so significant, right? That frequently what can happen is if it's a good project and you have that kind of washout, that leads people to give up, okay? Once the move, if it restarts again, okay, it could be pretty powerful, right? Because I can tell you this much, nobody was bullish stocks when it finally bottomed in December of 1988, okay? I'm sorry, December of 87. You know, that, that felt like the end of the world, and that was the low. And I'm sure a lot of people who, you know, FOMO'd into Manic, Matic may have felt the same way. So pain eventually leads to joy. So Matic has had a lot of pain. Um, and, you know, on Blockstack, uh, we'll take yours and your token metric systems word for it. I mean, it's always ranked up there. So for a guy like me who doesn't necessarily understand what's underneath the hood the way you do, I follow token metrics. All right. Yeah. So thank you for that, Bill. Now, yeah, so Matic hasn't had, had really a good year this year. Last year, it had a great year. Uh, this year, it hasn't really had a good year. I believe last time I checked, it was up about 7% um, year to date. So it has been underperforming Bitcoin. But I mean, they, they are launching their mainnet and they have lots of updates coming out. So definitely, definitely one to keep an eye on. But as we like to say, always be cautious. I mean, because they're risking everything. Even when something looks like a sure thing, there are always risks. So definitely leverage token metrics to help you with your research all right thank you for that let's go on to the next question here okay so somebody is asking about paxos gold okay this is i'll make this one quick so yes paxos gold is available on token metrics so if you just go here and just search for pax Actually, no, uh, gold, PAX gold. Yeah, PAX gold is available. Uh, we, we have it as, this is the short-term score, but this, this is for day trader. But if we go to value investor, uh, it's actually, it's, it's, it's a decent score. So value investor, fundamentals are good. Technology is good. Right now we're bearish on the TA. It's basically in a way telling us that uh, gold has kind of peaked. So, but, 
is still in the top 30 in Tokimetrix rank. Early in the year, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, I think a, a few weeks ago it was in the top 10 at one point. So it was really kind of a, a good hedge to have some gold exposure in your crypto portfolio. Okay, um, thank you for that. Let's go on to the to the next one. Okay. Okay, so this is a question I kind of did answer. Actually, I think that was on our on our private call with our customers, but we can answer that here as well. All right, so question is, how would you suggest a person applying or transitioning into working for a blockchain company? And which companies do you think are the most interesting to work for in the space right now? Okay, so this is really a question about, this is, this is, this is he's asking about career advice and how to break into the blockchain and crypto industry. Now, as somebody who has been in this industry since 2016 and full-time since 2017, uh, I, th I definitely do have some perspective. I would say if you want to break into the blockchain industry, you first of all have to have a skill, right? Now, it may seem obvious, but you have to have a skill at something, something you do better than most people and something you love doing. And then you have to be willing to make a list of companies you would like to work with or just even sectors you would like to work in in the blockchain space, right? So... I've made videos on this early in the past about kind of getting a six-figure job. This was before I was making crypto videos. <laughs> this was back in in 20, early 2017. But the same concept can apply in the blockchain space. I would I call this basically my, my dream 25. Get five areas in the blockchain space you like. So we could say exchanges. We could say um, crypto funds. Uh, I'll say exchanges, hedge funds, venture capital. Uh, other one could be media, like media, news, blogging. And the other one could be, uh, I mean, I don't know, uh, event hosting. Right? So those are five categories. Then in those five categories, come up with five dream companies in each category. So that's five dream event companies. So event companies out there, I don't know, like consensus, I don't know. Right. Um, then five dream VC funds, five dream hedge funds, five dream media news companies, five dream whatever. Right. So you have you'll end up with 25 different companies. And then the strategy is to go on LinkedIn and network and find people who work there, who work in a role you would like to work in or who are a, who are a, a manager for a role you would like to work in. So, for example, if you want to work with. This, 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 one, this one is probably tough, but let's say Andreessen Horowitz. You would find, and you want to work in their crypto investment arm. You'd probably find the, the, a partner or manager for that fund on LinkedIn. Send them a message, but don't send them a message saying you want a job. Because that one, that, that rarely will give you a job. Unless you're like Michael Jordan or something uh, for, for crypto, that will rarely give you a job. But just request an information or interview is the term, right? Information or interview. You're basically saying you're curious about the company, you want to learn more about it, and you just want to kind of pick their brain. Now, this is essentially a numbers game. So the, the conversion rate on this is going to be very low. So if you send out messages to 25 different companies, so 25 different companies, and just I would probably send to maybe five different people, so you, in a way, it is kind of a spray and pray approach, but trust me on this, it will work. Because uh, basically, your goal is just to get a job at any of these Dream 25 companies. And the way to do it is by networking. It, rarely do you get a job from applying online. Now, that can work at times, I mean, because that's how I got my job at, at IBM. Uh, but my job at Deloitte, I got that through networking, through having somebody refer me. So I would say try to get referred if possible. And then the other way to break in is to work as an intern. Obviously, that can apply to everybody, uh, but because some jobs are very competitive and your way in is to maybe get in, uh, work for free or just volunteer because trying to get it, for example, trying to get a job at recent Horowitz is probably going to be tough. But you say, hey, if you go to somebody who works and say, here, I'll, I'll volunteer for six months. And I'll basically work for free and just help you with research. And then if, if your research is good and they like it, 
then maybe they'll offer you a job. I mean, I've seen that work a lot. It's obviously not for everybody because if you have a family and kids, you probably can't do that. Uh, but I would say, but maybe that's something you, you could do on the side. I mean, because for example, Sam, who joined, who joined Tokometrics and before that, Diary of a Made Man, he brought, he, he, he joined me by working as an intern because during the ICO bubble, so many people were reaching out, asking for jobs. And I was saying no to everybody. But then Sam reached out to me. He had a very nice message. It was probably like a page long email that was customized and tailored to me. Then I hopped on a call with him. We had a Zoom call for like half an hour. I didn't have a job for him at that point, but I said, here, uh, just be my Telegram admin. Uh, just monitor that Telegram. He did that for about six months. Uh, but I also liked his background because because he had a background in finance. And then when it came to a point where I needed to hire somebody to help me with, that, with, with crypto research because I was just too busy doing the crypto world tour, he was the first person I trusted because I, I had been working with him as my Telegram admin and he had a background in finance, a skill I needed. So it made sense to me to bring him on board and, and pay him as opposed to finding somebody unknown. So it was really, it, it, I picked Sam based on convenience, right? He was somebody I knew, right? I knew and trusted, and he had the skills I was looking for, and I knew it would be a quick hire. I didn't, 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 I didn't have to go out there and interview a bunch of people, right? He had the skill set, I trusted him, and he was close. So that's kind of the, the Trojan horse way of getting in a way, right? It's kind of volunteer, work with somebody for a while, get the, have them know you and know who you are, and know that you're a good worker, and then that when a, when something opens up, they typically bring you in. Um, I know I'm kind of all over the place, uh, but Bill, any thoughts, any comments on how people can break into the the industry? No, I, I think you said it. I mean, I LinkedIn messaged Charlie Shrem and was mm -hmm. like, "Hey, uh, I can bring a totally unique perspective," and I think he was like moving through an airport with his crew. And he's like, yeah, in fact we do. So I started out doing small stuff for him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, I flew to Sarasota, Florida and I was like, Hey, this is what I can really do. And then, you know, we were off to the races. So, you know, you're just going to have to go to somebody and say, Hey, I want to get involved. Right. Pa mm -hmm. Passion matters. Right. There's a, there's a line between passion and moon boy, but you know, you can tell who's committed, who's got the passion, you know, and I, I got my first job in this business overall using a similar, you know, non-electronic method of, I knew somebody, he referred me, uh, and they considered me kind of a known quantity because I was referred by somebody. And that's how I got my internship at JP Morgan's foreign exchange desk, you know, which was, you know, they, they had two interns. No, I, I went mm -hmm. to a school, I went to Rutgers, that's the State University of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So because I was referred by somebody else, I beat all the Ivy League guys to that seat. That, that's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, networking, networking matters a lot. And LinkedIn is very underrated. Also go to events in person. So whether conferences, meetups, and just network. So and networking does not mean just getting business cards. Networking means you, you follow up with people because I would say probably, and I've, I've actually done a, a, a kind of exper experiment on this. I'll give out probably 100, 100 business cards and I would say 5% or less people actually follow up. And I think if you just, if you're one of those few people who actually follows up, that will really separate you from almost everybody out there. Because for example, my job at Deloitte, I got to somebody, I exchanged contact information with two years back. Never spoke with him, but we're, we added him on LinkedIn. And then when I was trying to get a job at Deloitte, because I got turned down the first time, I said, you know what? Let me find somebody who works there to refer me. Not, not only did he refer me for a job, but I, I got a more senior job because Deloitte turned me down for a job as an analyst. But through a referral, I got a job as a consultant which is a job you typically only get after working two years or more as an analyst. So I got a more senior job just by my network. So, and if anything, your acquaintances are more likely to help you 
than your your friends because you you have so many acquaintances you meet, so many people you meet at events. If you just keep in touch, follow up. I mean, so one thing I like doing that is when I travel to different conferences, I don't take business cards. I just take people's telegram, uh, add them on Instagram, social media, and we kind of stay in touch indirectly, right? Somebody will post a story. I'll just comment saying, hey, uh, awesome vacation or whatever, right? Or somebody will comment on my story. Because in a way, for example, through Instagram, people can see a piece of you as a person. They see who you are as a person. So if they follow you on Instagram for like six months or 12 months, they feel like they know you. So next time they meet you at a conference, they feel like they've known you this whole time. So you aren't just somebody who just exchanged a business card. Or maybe it's Twitter, right? Maybe it's Twitter. Maybe it's Telegram. Maybe it's adding them in a, in a group. So there's so many ways to network, uh, especially with technology nowadays. And it's, it's the best way to break in. But let us know if you have any other ways to break in, into the, the blockchain and crypto industry. Uh, please share them down below in the comments. All right. Okay, let me take a look here. Next question. Okay, so this is a question about bull run. With the updates and the good news coming from Visa and other stuff happening in the in the blockchain space, what will this mean for the length of the next bull run? So basically you're asking, how long will the next bull run be? Um, uh, Bill, do you want to talk about this? Kind of share your, your take, how long sure. a bull run could be in crypto? Absolutely. So the Visa announcement is a function of what's going on with COVID-19. Now I know that's not everybody's favorite subject, but COVID-19 isn't going anywhere, okay? Government responses to COVID-19 are not going anywhere. Most of those government responses involve printing money, which can have long-term consequences. So to give you the absolute condensed version, how about three years? Oh, right. wow. I mean, so how about three years? That sounds right. great. In other words you know, pull up a stocks chart. How many years did the S and P go up because the fed was printing money? 12 years. Yeah. Okay. So we're in crypto. We do it faster. So we'll do it in three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do it in three. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, you know, 2017 was like a, you know, it, it, it was like a, a five or six month bull market followed by like a mania phase. Okay. Just how many years can crypto just mm -hmm. three years? I like it. I like it. I mean, so obviously I don't really do technical analysis, so it's kind of out of my wheelhouse, but I think it's possible. So in, in other videos where we looked at the Bitcoin halving, we did realize that typically the, the growth of each bull run has been lower by by an incremental factor. So, so for example, the the first book and halving, I think the factor was by a factor of two. Then the second one was by a factor of three. Then assuming this is all pure speculation, but assuming that maintains, then the next halving, I mean the next bull run would be by a factor of three. Not on, no, four. But either way, I think it's it's tough to say. Now, based off of that analysis, and this this is a video on, on the channel from I think a month ago, we think Bitcoin minimum could could reach fifty thousand in two years. Uh, that was kind of the, the 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 speculation based off of that. Obviously, nothing really scientific because the sample size is very very small. But I mean, if you, if you say worst case Bitcoin does goes to 50,000 in two years, obviously people won't be so happy, but it will still be a good thing, right? People won't be like crying about it, but obviously long term, we're all very, very bullish on Bitcoin. And I, I know uh, we had Bobby Lee who said that he believes the price can go to uh, above 100,000 by end of 2021. And maybe that's possible, right? I mean, we have other people talking about Bitcoin going, going to a million. I think that, that I think that's possible long term, very long term. But I mean, right now we're all just purely speculating. But uh, always a good question to have. Let us know what you think. 
How long do you think the next bull run will last? Let us know in the comments below. All right, so let's check in here with our audience. Let's take some, let's see how people are doing in the comments. What's your Telegram group? So just go in Telegram and search for token metrics. We have the token metrics discussion, uh, but we also have the token metrics private Telegram, which is under the professional plan. So we have lots of uh, customers in there and also people we meet around the space who are well-known entities that we also add in the group and people do kind of get exposure to, to them and it's a, great, it's a great place to network. Okay. Okay, so somebody's talking about Hashgraph being used to track COVID-19. Okay, I haven't heard about that one. That's that's interesting. Okay, Summer Lily says, the average people do not have extra money to save. They live on what they earn. I, too, make them use crypto to simplify technology, make it very accessible, plus education available everywhere. Okay, that's good to know. Warren Buffett joins the course of billionaires warning of a stock market crash. Yeah, I think um, that's definitely possible. We have covered that in earlier shows. Uh, Pink Lion says, I start, started with Bitcoin ATM and then Coinbase. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I think Bitcoin ATMs definitely do make it easier for people. Bitcoin saves life says, I've been buying Bitcoin for over five years. I mean, that's incredible. That's, that's some dedication right there. Okay, all right. Well, uh, uh, Bill, uh, any last words before we kind of have you uh, head out? Folks, it's time to stay with the trade. It's time. It's our time. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Thank you, Bill. It was a pleasure. And talk to you uh, next week. And be Take sure care. to follow Bill at, at crypto underscore noble on Twitter. Uh, he, he has lots of... Uh, insightful tweets and hand-drawn TA as well. Right. That's where pencil comes from. All right. All right, folks. Thanks. Have a good night. Take care, Bill. Good night. All righty. We just landed, landed on, on the moon in the, the Lambo. Crypto family, how are you? Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, man. We had Bill for almost two hours. That was that was great. That was fantastic. Yeah, be sure to follow Bill on, on Twitter. All right. Bitcoin transaction fees are up 800%. Is that true? I'm surprised. That's, that's very interesting if that's the case. Love the show. Uh, th thank you, Spartan1. Thank you so much for the words. Be sure to like, subscribe. I mean, first of all, thank you so much, everybody. Crypto family. Our YouTube channel is blowing up. Uh, if you're not following us on Tokenmetrics, just go to youtube.com slash Tokenmetrics. Our channel's growth has blown up. We, the subscriber growth in the last one month was over, over hold on, let me, let me pull up the exact metric actually. Um, but it, it was over 100%, I believe. Something crazy, I think over 66. But anyway, either way, our channel has been blowing up. Videos have been blowing up, going viral. Well, I guess mini viral for us, for our channel. But thank you so much, Crypto Family, for all the support. Uh, we still have a few people who are still watching this from the, the personal channel, which is nice, which is nice, my, my personal channel. But you're definitely missing out if you're not on the Tokenmetrics YouTube channel because we're posting daily videos every single day. And to a point that the YouTube algorithm just loves it. They can't get enough of it. So here, let me pull it up to show you. So here are the daily videos we're posting, right? Subscribe for daily videos. This is the live stream right now. So this is a video we posted an hour ago. Uh, this video we posted, the 10 coins to 10, 10 million. This, this is obviously a clip from the live stream, but because not, not everybody has time to go through and watch all, all the live stream videos because they're typically two to three hours long. So we're now getting the, the good clips, the highlights on each live stream and posting that every single day. So, I mean, we grew this from zero. It's now at 2,400 subscribers. And at this space, we think we could hit 10,000 subs by end of the year. So be sure to go here, hit the subscribe button, show you that you love crypto family, daily videos every single day, right? We talked about McAfee, Stellar, Cardano, 
So if you're not subscribed, you are definitely missing out. And thank you if you are already subscribed. Okay, all right. So now let me go through here. Okay, can you check Hive Unibride projects? Also tell us about hot projects below $15 million market cap. Thanks, Ian. We love you. Thank you so much for the support. We appreciate that. Uh, so Hive, we Hive. I don't think we have that, but it's, it's basically Steam. We haven't. Yeah, Hive is not here, but it's basically Steam, right? It's, it's Steam with a scandal, basically. All right. So Unibright, that we do not have yet, but it is on our list of projects to research. So stay tuned. We will be researching that. That that is one that, that has been pretty popular. So our team has that on our list. Uh, please be patient with us. Uh, we do have a long list of products to research. It's getting pretty long, uh, and we're, we're, we're trying to be thorough with our research, so stay tuned. Okay. Would like to know yours and Bill's thoughts on returning to a gold standard of, Bit, of Bitcoin being included in an SDR. Okay. Um, about Bitcoin going to a gold standard. Um, I, I think it will be a good place to go, but I think it's, it's still kind of unrealistic, right? Um, so I, honestly, I don't really think, because governments are going to try to fight it for the longest time, because fiat currencies would have to die for for countries to go onto the gold standard right so and the dollar and the because Amer basically Amer the american economy would have to die uh, so they'll print money to infinity and beyond so i don't really see that happening in the short term it could happen in the long term right obviously any anything is possible but there's actually speaking of that there's an interesting book that's about to come out and it's basically a book by people who believe that modern monetary theory, basically printing money, works. And I find this curious because I want to hear what people we think are delusional, right? The central banks, why they think this theory works. And it's always good to listen and learn from your enemy. Well, not really enemy, but people who have opposing viewpoints to you, right? Because obviously we have, in crypto, we think quantitative easing. We basically have a Austrian economics philosophy when it comes to the economy and we kind of know all the talking points but to make our our talking points and our just stance and, and beliefs and philosophy even stronger we have to be willing to listen to the other side and there was this book that that's it's not out yet uh i'm not sure if, if i can find that here let me let me see mmt because it's by a professor from stony brook um stony brook uh, okay, yes, yeah, so here, just found, the, just found the author. So the author is Stephanie Kelton. So it's called The Deficit Myth. Now, I've not read this book yet, so please bear with me uh, as Amazon gives me this pop-up here. So, man, so many pop-ups. Okay, so the book says, the leading thinker and most most visible public advocate of modern monetary theory, the freshest and most important idea about economics in decades, delivers a radically different, bold, new understanding for how to build a just and prosperous society. <laughs> okay. Uh, then they go on to say, basically, it's basically a book that says that they believe that printing money indefinitely will work. Now, I don't personally agree with this, but... I, I think just being able to understand their, the, how people justify it, right? how the, the opposing side and central banks justify this theory would be good because maybe that gives us better perspective on what we're doing. Uh, now, in terms of your question about SDRs, I quite frankly don't really know much about them, so that's kind of out of my wheelhouse. So I'll leave that to the, to the experts for that. Uh, but, I mean, going back to the gold standard, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because so much has to happen with the with the global economy right because the US dollar is the world's reserve currency and it's the, the petrodollar so lots of other 
countries in the developing world would have to give up on the dollar and say, you know what, we're better off going back to gold. But lots of other countries are also complicit in propping up the U.S. dollar and fiat currencies. So it's almost like they all have to agree that, you know what, we're out of the dollar. But before that even happens, a, a big economy, whether China, some other economy, would have to get off of the dollar and that would have to start a cascading effect. But obviously, I'm no economist. I would leave that to the economists out there. Uh, that's kind of just my quick take on it. Let me know what you think. Do you think we'll ever go back to the gold standard? Uh, quite frankly, I, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. I feel like they'll keep on printing money indefinitely. And if anything, we, we may skip the gold standard and go to the Bitcoin standard, which would be, I mean, it would be... We just landed, landed on the moon in a Lambo. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on here to the next uh, question. Okay. If legacy markets fall hard again, will crypto follow? Uh, good question. I would say it depends what we define as hard. If we say like the pandemic, yes, I mean, anything is possible. Crypto is volatile. Bitcoin is volatile. Yes, it's buried pretty well versus the, the dollar and other currencies, right? Because if we go back here, let me just look at, uh, let me pull up a Bitcoin trading chart. Just give me one second here. Because if we look at purely at BTC, BTC USD. For example, right? So, why isn't this working for me? All right. So this is the chart of Bitcoin USD. So we already know Bitcoin. When there's liquidity risk, when people are fleeing out of assets that are performing well and they're taking cash to just take profits to go on the sidelines. Even Bitcoin and crypto is not immune. If anything, it's more immune because Bitcoin and crypto are real free markets that trade 24-7 globally. So while equities and stocks only trade uh, during the weekday, 9 to nine a.m. to 4 p.m., um, obviously there are after trading hours, but they can be closed. Markets can also be paused when there are large crashes. Bitcoin and crypto do not have that luxury. So if anything... That's why they're more volatile, but that's why we also have larger returns because there's more risk, right? No risk, no reward. So if a crash happens in equities again, I do strongly believe that crypto and Bitcoin can have a crash. But one thing we've learned is they've also been, Bitcoin and crypto has been a, in a way a leading indicator, right? So because it's 24 seven and it's trading globally, what happens in equities typically happens. So if we add, let me, let's add the S&P 500 here, right? S&P 500 and Dow Jones. So if we look at this here, right? We had crashes here. Then Bitcoin bounced back before equities bounced back, right? So it was a leading indicator. So stocks have, been, have bounced back as well. But Bitcoin, in a way, crashes faster and further than equities and then bounces back faster and further, right? So crypto and Bitcoin are leading indicators, I believe, when it, if we compare this to equities, that, that being the Dow Jones and S&P 500. So going back to your question, right? Your question was, if legacy markets fall hard, will crypto follow? Yes, I think crypto will follow probably faster and will lose a lot more money. However, the recovery will also be grander and make up a lot more money. So that's just something we can't really take away from, from, from Bitcoin and crypto. It kind of comes with the territory because it is a risky and volatile asset. It's still nascent versus legacy markets, which have been around for a lot longer than Bitcoin. So to answer your question, yes, it's possible. But long term, we're still bullish on Bitcoin, still bullish on crypto. 
but let me know what you think down in the comments below and speaking of comments let's check in here with the audience with crypto family uh crypto eng uh engineer i think says i made 1.3 million usd in 2017 and lost 90 percent it's true though we got to cash out on the tops yeah you got to cash out man you got to cash out uh all of us learned our mistakes in the last bull run so the next bull run we will be a lot wiser for sure most definitely what do you think dogecoin will do during a bull run uh dogecoin i think it will it will go up uh but it's in, in a way it's a meme coin but it, it does have utility for tipping uh but i don't think it's going to like blow up and be the, the best performing coin per se but I, I do think it will perform relatively well it has been in a way i think on core it's not been correlated to bitcoin i think uh, I know Tizen has been bullish on that as a, as a hedge versus Bitcoin when, when Bitcoin is crashing. Thank you to Ian. Been rocking with you since April 2017. Uh, thank you, IMN, ICO. Appreciate that. Amazing info and turn that beat back up. Oh, yeah. Let's definitely do that. We just landed, landed on, on the moon in a Lambo. Crypto family, crypto family. Taking pictures with the zone. Moon Lambo. <laughs> All right, all right. So, do you think Harmony one will moon six million market cap? So Harmony has underperformed. Uh, so, which has been pretty surprising, but in a way, I mean, not so surprising because there are so many competing blockchains out there that are trying to scale and do DApps and all that. So the space is oversaturated, and you really have to stand out and do something a lot better, almost ten times better for people to really pay attention. And they haven't really done anything 10 times better since they launched. Uh, okay, back to the AMA. When will Ethereum flip Bitcoin? So this is a question I have covered before. So my, pr my prediction is that Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in market cap by the year 2030. And I've, co I've, I've covered this so much to a point i'm turning blue in the face but if you just look at the developer network for ethereum and the growth and you just project out 10 years it's a no-brainer i mean just even look, look at DeFi, decentralized finance all that is happening on ethereum not really happening on bitcoin bitcoin is still a great technology don't get me wrong right all, all the bitcoin maximums like i mean really like be rational be reasonable okay i mean first of all just having one single asset goes against anybody who has who believes in diversifying okay bitcoin is great however we diversify into lots of other assets ethereum is one of them ethereum is a smart contract platform for developers to build on top of that is seeing economies of scale and we think in 10 years for example if you just take the derivatives market which has over half a trillion dollars and you put that onto the blockchain you tokenize that it's not going to Bitcoin, sorry. It's going to Ethereum. Ethereum is a lot smoother. That's why even all the big companies joining the space, JP Morgan, JPM Coin, I mean, they're all, Quorum is a fork of Ethereum. They're all using Ethereum for this. They're not using Bitcoin, using Ethereum for building. That's the use case for Ethereum. Bitcoin's use case is not for building. Yes, you have other proxies, like you have Blockstack that's secured by Bitcoin that allows you to build applications. Uh, then you also have, uh, what was the other one? Woodstock? uh R R riff rif token that one hasn't really done squat hasn't done diddly squat since it launched i'm sorry i know we had uh diego uh on for ama last year but i mean it has underperformed they did they did raise a bunch of money but uh they haven't really blown up like we thought they would blow up and because of that let me see if i can pull up the the, the chart here so flipping there was a site that tracked this. So, flippening watch, flippening dot watch. Okay, so this site does not seem to be working anymore. Okay, not sure what's going on here. Yeah, this is funny. Not sure what, what happened here. Okay, gonna have to find a different site. Apologies. 
Yeah, so nobody's tracking it anymore. Did they go out of business? I mean, I don't know. But anyway, we think 10 years. Now, that's just kind of our safe, conservative play. Anything is possible. But if we look at the market cap right now, right? So if we go to token metrics, and we just look at market caps. Bitcoin's market cap is 178 billion. Ethereum's market cap is 22 billion, 23 billion. So basically, let's say 180 billion and 20 billion. So Ethereum has to do a 9x to catch up to Bitcoin. And I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think we would really have to look at five to 10 years time frame to really factor that in. And I think DeFi is going to be one of those DeFi ICOs was kind of the, the first big thing that really took Ethereum to a thousand dollars in in one Ether that price. Uh, but I think DeFi is, is one of the things that could really push Ethereum to catching up to Bitcoin. But the other part is tokenizing assets. Tokenizing assets is going to happen on Ethereum's blockchain, not really Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really a store of value, digital gold. It's, that's kind of the use case that it's really doing well with. But tokenizing assets, I think that's Ethereum's use case to win. They have the network effects, the developers, the traction already. And it's going to be hard for Bitcoin to do all so many things great. It can only really do a few things great. And I think store of value and really being the digital gold is what it, it does great. It's, I don't think it's going to, to be a great protocol to do everything great. Because that's... That's basically be, it's hard to become a jack of all trades and a master of all. Right? Typically, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none. So Bitcoin has to figure out what it's going to master and stick to it. And Ethereum already has already mastered smart contracts and developing dApps. But that's my take on it. Do I sound crazy? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, all right. Don't think I'll be able to get to all these questions. Let me see if there's any interesting questions here. Maybe if I just do like rapid fire. Uh, let's see here. Okay, what is your guess for Ethereum? What What's your guess for Ethereum's all time high price during the next bull run? Well, I think that it's tough to predict. That's that's kind of speculation, but I think we're definitely going to go past the last all-time high, fourteen hundred. Uh, then I think from there, I mean, I would say we're very bullish on Ethereum. I mean, that kind of just tells you all we need to know. Very bullish long-term on Ethereum, and that's what I can really say. Really, I mean, because everything else would be just would be pure speculation. Dao Hongfei of Neo says Neo will provide a built-in oracle at layer one, which empowers smart contracts and Neo with the ability to directly access internet URLs. Any thoughts on this, Ian? Okay, so Neo is going to have oracles under blockchain. Okay, I mean that would be good. Oracles are definitely have been trending, especially with Chainlink. First of all, for anybody who got in to Chainlink because of us. Back in 2017, we were, part of, we, were, we were in the ICO, back when nobody knew Chainlink. I mean, you, know what? you could say our community were the early investors in Chainlink. So shout out to you, crypto family. I mean, if you're still holding Chainlink, I mean, you, you, you banked. I mean, quite frankly, myself, I got out a long time ago, but hey, I still made my money, didn't take any L's. I'm grateful for that. But that goes to show you, tokenmetrics really works. Doing your research really works because... So Chainlink is now a top 20, top 25 market cap coin. And you could say our community discovered that cryptocurrency before anybody else did, before 4chan, before all the VCs and investors. So if you are with us since then, give yourself a pat on the back. I mean, crypto family. I mean, because we obviously can't do this by ourselves. We do it because of you. You guys help us. You, you help us kind of keep us honest on the right path by bringing us projects, giving us different questions which make us think about things on a deeper scale and deeper level so thank you for that but i mean back to your question about neo 
Neil. I mean, if they add Oracles, that would definitely be good. We are bullish on Neo. Uh, if we look, if we go to token metrics here, and I just pull up Neo. So short term, Neo is top twenty in market cap for for day trader. Uh, if we go to value investor, very bullish on Neo. Top ten fundamentals are good. Technology is good. TA very bullish, so I mean, so not surprised that token metrics, even without knowing what Dao Hong Fei said, quickly turned bullish. It turned bullish real quick, super quick, zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> so our models basically picked that up that uh, the technical analysis for for Neo has shifted. So basically, token metrics is saying, even for value investors, people with a longer time horizon, we are bullish. Now, that's kind of indirectly factoring this in, I would take, right? But oracles are really very interesting. I, I think it's something for decentralized protocols and platforms to have. So it's good to, to see them as a layer one protocol building that. Uh, now, obviously, I have had my issues with Neo in the past, where lots of projects we invested in that were building a Neo, abandoned Neo, saying it was not ready. So projects like Phantasma, projects like... Uh, Others, I mean, the, like Red Pulse, a bunch of different products. I mean, almost all the Neo ICOs, unfortunately, have have gotten wrecked. They've had quick plump, quick pumps, you know, quick glimmers of hope, but they've all almost just ended up getting wrecked. So that's also kind of why I, I think some people are jaded with Neo. There haven't been really any good projects building a Neo. Even the exchanges, I, I know there was an exchange a while back that ended up sh shutting down because they said they couldn't really run a Neo. So they really need to get better use cases, better people, developers building applications on their platform that are working. Um, I haven't really looked much into what Neo is doing with DeFi, with this decentralized finance. So that would be interesting to see what they're doing. I would assume if they're looking into adding oracles, that could be partially a reason why, maybe because they've seen what Ethereum is doing. I know lots of other protocols are trying to copy because it is a copycat game, right? And with that being said, I mean, right now, very bullish on Neo. So for anybody out there holding Neo, I mean, haro, haro. But hey, no, no, not financial advice. And if you take any L's, don't mention our name. <laughs> but let me know in the comments below if you think uh, that's a bullish sign for Neo. Okay, all right. Next question. Do you still hold Phantasma? So, and what do you think about the recent developments of the project? So actually, honestly, I don't even know if I still hold any Phantasma. I, I, that might sound weird, but because I, I, I've had tokens for Phantasma and there were, for those who don't know, I was an investor in Phantasma's ICO. I was also an advisor for them. Uh, currently no, no, no longer advising them. Uh, the, the contract with them expired. Uh, but, but anyway, my tokens were vested for like two years. So. And during the bear market, I had Phantasma, a ton, a ton of them that were basically worthless. <laughs> I mean, because because it, it has been very disappointing. It has underperformed, uh, and I was selling Phantasma here and there, like probably like every every quarter, every three to every three to six months, I would sell some Phantasma. So I know all the Phantasma I had that was unlocked, I sold, but I have to go back and double check whether I still have some that's locked. That's why it's hard to say, but I would say all the Phantasma I had is unlocked. I did sell because, I mean, we're, we're here trying to run a business. Uh, the project has kind of been disappointing. To, and honestly, they didn't really they didn't really listen to my knowledge. I mean, but they, they have been building. So, I mean, you definitely do have to give them a hat tip to that. They've been building and executing. But I haven't kept tabs on them really in the last quarter or this year so i don't really know what new developments they are but with that being said i mean if, if you're still in the project let me know what you think uh i know the market cap is still very low but if you got in early on the space is getting very very competitive uh so it's, it's tough to say uh and I, we don't have it in token metrics yet uh let me take a look here i don't think we've added that project in yet yeah so it's not in token metrics yet as of now uh but stay tuned uh we do have a long list of projects we have to research 
So stay tuned uh, for that. Okay, all right. Next question. What will it take for privacy coins like XMR, which is Monero, to go mainstream? Oh man, I don't think Monero is going to go mainstream. I mean, Monero by definition cannot go mainstream. Monero is really like the the it's like the the real privacy coin. And if it if it's the real privacy coin, the governments are not going to let it go mainstream. So I don't think Monero is going to go mainstream. When I say mainstream, I mean like mainstream like like gold, like the dollar, like Bitcoin. Because first of all, some exchange, some exchanges don't even list Monero due to compliance issues, being cautious of regulation. So I don't think it's really going to go mainstream. Now, Monero will still be, I mean, first, first of all, we, we, we do we, we do typically like Monero. If we pull it up here on Tokenmetrics, right now it's 25th in Tokenmetrics rank uh, for Valley Investor. Day Trader, is, it's not really good. The, the TA is not good right, right now. It's neutral, but fundamentals are good technology. All right, could be better. Uh, we definitely do like other privacy coins. I think a lot more. But with that being said, Monero is definitely a decent project. But going mainstream, I don't really see it because that's kind of, I mean, you could say they would have sold out if they went mainstream because Monero is really kind of like the cryptocurrency that's not meant to, to be sold out. It's, it's meant to be kind of in the shadows for for people who want complete privacy. Obviously, I have heard about people saying Monero can't be tracked, and some entities have claimed to be able to track it, but it is tougher than other than Bitcoin, for example, and some other cryptocurrencies. Uh, with that being said, I don't really see them going mainstream because that would be the opposite of what their, their philosophy is about. Their philosophy is meant for total privacy, and if everybody's using it, then all the regulators would be They'll they'll try to they'll probably make it illegal or something, but let me know. Anybody else with any other takes? Do you think Monero is going to go mainstream anytime soon? Let me know. All right. Oh man, we've been at this for a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is about J.K. Rowling and Bitcoin. Okay. Let me let me let me pull up the tweet here. Because, all right, so I have pulled up the tweet. Now, why is it giving me all of this? All right, so, so the question is, what's your thought on J.K. Rowling tweeting about Bitcoin? So for those who don't know, J.K. Rowling, uh, apologies for that. Uh, okay. So where's so here's the tweet. J.K. Rowling, for those who don't know, is the author of. I guess she changed her bio, but Harry Potter, right? She's a famous author for Harry Potter, one of the most popular books of all time, right? Especially amongst kids. Now she said, "I don't understand Bitcoin. Please explain it to me." Now this goes all the way from. So this began by a tweet from. Uh, Lei Kuen, who's a writer for Coindesk, she said the most bullish signal I've seen all week is a mainstream novelist who I want to name, but she's so good and not a sci-fi type, pinged me unsolicited to ask about Bitcoin, and now consider this week a success. Then somebody tagged, J.K. Rowling is my favorite. This was from Marvin, uh, who's a writer. Well, sorry, a consultant for HBO's Silicon Valley. Great show, by the way. Highly recommend. Great comedy. Hilarious show. And then she chimed in, if she ever pings me, I will die from happiness. Then she chimed, I don't understand Bitcoin. Please explain it to me. So then crypto Twitter just went bananas, saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. Right? So Vitalik chimed in here. It's a digital currency. There's 18 million units of it. It's not backed by anything. It's just valuable because it's like collectibles. <laughs> then uh, Safedin Amos talked about his book. He basically, shilled his book. 
I mean, basically, everybody chimed in except me. You know, I missed out on this, huh? You know, uh, probably would have been a good idea to go in there and just show Tokyo metrics. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But yeah, crypto Twitter just went bananas about it. So basically, what's my take on this? I mean, it's good. It's obviously good for, for crypto to have people like her talking about Bitcoin. But she's still kind of just more curious because people have been talking about Bitcoin. They haven't really, she hasn't really bought any Bitcoin or gone all in or really had that moment of truth. So with her, it's kind of just still something she's just learning about, right? Uh, but I think it was good how the community kind of chimed in together and tried to kind of explain Bitcoin. But in a way, it was way too much, you know? Maybe it was overkill. Maybe, maybe it kind of scared her off, right? Because uh, I don't know if she posted, I don't think she posted any other comments after that talking about Bitcoin. Right? I mean, because everybody here is just chiming in. But maybe she just couldn't. I mean, because here, everybody's just shilling their shit. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon my French. <laughs> A consensus, uh, unchained, nugget news, Dovey one. I mean, Bitcoin. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is Justin's son. <laughs> this is too funny. I mean, it's like the who's who of crypto is coming in to just shill whatever they they have. I mean, hot or not, I mean, uh, Preston Fish, if that's his name, Tone Vase, <laughs> I mean, Justin Sun again, Blockfolio, uh, Ben Collins, whoever this is, who's NBC News. I mean, this is hilarious. This, I mean, I mean, this might actually do the opposite. I mean, we see the founder of FTX. I mean, who, who Etoro? This is this is too funny. I had no idea it was this hilarious. But I mean, yeah, I mean, because this might have just scared her off, because. Too many people just blowing up her Twitter feed, but hey, she does have 14 million followers, so maybe she's used to it. But maybe that's also why she didn't respond back because she had no idea so many people would just come in here trying to kind of push their push their angle or story. But I mean, I think. But jokes aside, though, I think it is good that people are curious because people have to get exposed to Bitcoin and crypto before they really go all in. Uh, this comes from just regular advertising. People have to get exposed to something, I believe, six or seven times before they end up buying. So with that being said, that's the, that's the first exposure. But maybe she actually, no, she was exposed to Bitcoin before that. This is probably the second. Then maybe she was exposed to it prior to that. So it might take a while before she goes all in. But hey, I mean, it's hilarious seeing the crypto community gang up. And uh, let's just give her some room. Let's let her breathe. Let her cool off and then maybe we, we do it all over again but let me know do you think that was overkill uh dude or do you think that was good for for bitcoin let me know in the comments down below let me check in here with people and see how we're doing um she responded a lot and made a joke out of it okay i uh, thank you so free go on her twitter page and read her tweets okay let me, let me Okay, let me go straight to J.K. Rowling's Twitter page. Maybe that's why. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything about Bitcoin. Let me let me do Control F. Okay, so she responded, "Oh my God! In case I haven't effectively demonstrated my ignorance between last night and this morning, I don't own Bitcoin. Also, the only thing I've ever recommended without understanding it was." Aris Murdoch novel. Okay. And here she goes on to say, hours and hours of you don't have to trust a bank and it can't be manipulated by governments. And not a single one of you thought to mention that Bitcoin gives you eternal life. <laughs> okay, she, she seems like she's, she's trolling. Morning all. People are calling each other simps in my mentions and a fake JK Rowling account has made a purchase of Bitcoin. How's your Saturday, Saturday shaping up? 
Okay, I have it on tech. Okay. Maybe maybe JK Rowling is just jealous that she didn't buy Bitcoin early enough and missed out on massive gains. Now she's trying to spread fraud to bring back the price. Then she says rumbled. <laughs> okay, this started as a joke, but now I'm afraid I'll never be able to log into Twitter again without someone getting angry. I don't own Bitcoin. One day you'll see a wizened old woman in the street trying to trade a Harry Potter book for a potato. Be kind. She did try to understand. Yeah, I mean, so I think people just let her cool off. I mean, this is way too much. I think th this is kind of the, the issue with crypto, right? We get too militant at times. We get too... Uh, people try to force somebody to adopt a viewpoint. And I think you have to kind of view crypto like this. One thing I've, for, from being crypto in a, for being in crypto for about four years now, I've realized crypto is a religion, and you can't just go and try to force your religion on somebody, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, uh, whatever, atheist. You can't just force your philosophy on somebody. You have to just kind of be cool, nonchalant. And let them see the light themselves. Let them discover it themselves. You can lead, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. That's one thing I've learned. I mean, I have my I have my own ways, my own viewpoint in the world. I, yes, I share it, but I don't try to force it on people. And I think with crypto, especially Bitcoin maximalists, I mean, they try to force their philosophy on everybody, like their own ways, right? And I think that's what makes crypto very tough for people to adopt especially newbies when they join the space they see how militant people are how tribalistic people are like people think their altcoin is the one and only altcoin going to the moon whether bitcoin ethereum or some other shitcoin they think that this is the only altcoin that's going to take people to the moon and beyond and if anybody does not believe in this altcoin then they're a pagan you know they're the devil i mean so I think it's really a bad way to to act in crypto. I mean, because nobody's going to get involved if anything they do or say it ends up being heresy, right? Ends up being construed as a as a pagan, all right? <laughs> so I think that's something that crypto will have to change. But honestly, I don't think it can even change. That's why crypto is still on the fringes, it's still on the edges. Because people view it as a cult, in a way, right? There's so many, and there's so many mini cults. It's a, it's a cult with lots of mini cults, right? It's kind of like a religion with lots of sects, right? You have the the Bitcoin maximalists, you have the the altcoiners, people who just dabble in, sh in shit coins. You have the people who believe in in just this pure altcoin, and they think the altcoin is the only one. And all the other groups hate each other, and they're fighting. It's kind of like we have this crypto crusade where each group is trying to kill the other group. And quite frankly, can we all just get along? I mean, kumbaya. And, and I know it's, it's probably tough to, to, to ask people in the crypto community to do, but I mean, I don't like it, quite frankly. I mean, just go on crypto Twitter. Crypto Twitter is the perfect example. So many people all end this with the same vision, but just because they have little differences, will hate on each other. And that's why I think the best analogy is to say that crypto is like a religion because religions are the same exact thing. But also, in general, I do realize this is a human concept and humans do always act like this regardless of where you put them, right? Humans always fight based on religion, based on race, ethnicity. I mean, even people who, who look exactly the same will find a, a small minor difference to fight against each other, right? For example, with the Rwandan genocide. People who are all Rwandan, Black African, and because the other side had different beliefs, or because they were initially favored by the by by Belgium, they ended up once being freed, fighting and causing a genocide. I mean, that's why you have lots of tribes who look exactly alike, who are basically from the same genes, brothers and sisters, end up fighting and killing each other just for a small difference in opinion. Now, so, I mean, yes, it is a human concept, but it's 
very frustrating to for that same human concept to now be in crypto uh and people are fighting over different coins i mean because while while that tribalism is a human concept you don't really see it in equities to my knowledge right because people don't really fall in love with a stock and say oh my god you know apple is the only stock anybody who does not invest in apple is the devil and they're going to hell they're a pagan you know anybody who buys amazon is is, is the devil you, you don't, don't really see that in stocks but in crypto you see that and i think people are too invested in crypto meaning that they get emotionally invested in a particular philosophy and they believe that they're right the way is the only way it's the single way anybody who does not believe in this is the enemy and that's very toxic behavior to have and anybody who's new to crypto who has not been indoctrinated in this cult when they come in and they see that behavior they're like whoa i didn't i didn't sign up for this i mean and i think one other example this is not this is not tied to crypto but it's also toxic behavior in a way it's kind of like on the internet like if, on those 4chan channels and those forums if you hear about like incels and like men going their own way whatever i mean some of those people end up going out there and just killing people and shooting people right i, I mean obviously i'm not saying everybody who believes in that is, is going to do that but i'm saying i mean yes i mean society i mean same thing also with social justice warriors right it's kind of like each end of the spectrum right you have the social justice warriors who are like militant with their beliefs then you have like the men going the own way who are also militant with their beliefs and i'm like it's not that militant like it's not it's not that serious because each side regardless whether you're conservative or, or liberal is toxic that's why I, i know i'm kind of rambling but that's why i always like being in the middle of a point and you always have to be willing to listen to to the, the opposing side the opposing viewpoint but never really call yourself a particular label right for example when, when it comes to politics i'm neither democrat or republican i'm I, i'm an independent i'm a free thinker I, that's the way i like to view it but i guess some people could say i'm libertarian in principle because most people in crypto are libertarian because of austrian e- economics and st- stuff like that but that's neither here nor there i mean because i feel like once you say you know what i stick to the side no matter what you're no longer a rational human being you're just biased and it's hard to act in reality and as it's, it's hard to act in objective reality when you're biased and yes all humans are biased but it's, it's worse when you own the bias and you don't don't really even try to be objective right when you say i'm just going to vote democrat no matter what when you say i'm just going to vote republican no matter what right that's why i mean i i'm i, I just recently officially registered as an independent here in maryland okay so so I, i i i don't really like taking sides on either topic but when it comes to crypto even when crypt, crypt, crypto yes we're pro crypto but my friends who are no coiners i don't make fun of them so that's one of the thing issues i have with the crypto community and how they're bashing peter ship right yes he has an opposing viewpoint yes he thinks bitcoin is is garbage and it's going to zero but just because somebody has opposing viewpoints to you does not mean you can't learn from them right so cuz i have re- this year i checked out peter ship's books and they're pretty good they're pretty educative i mean i learned a lot from his book um uh, the one book on on the economy it's kind of like a story about people on the island that was a very good book i mean so yes he's he's pro gold anti bitcoin i but hey you know what i'm pro bitcoin but i'm also pro gold you know just because somebody has an opposing viewpoint doesn't mean i cannot learn from them uh so i think it's something the computer the entire community can just kind of learn from but maybe i'm asking too much maybe it won't change um maybe this is just the human condition and people will just find a way to act like that but looking at stocks and equity equities and other markets the tribalism is not quite there i think because crypto brings in so many other parts right people have the not just making money but you have the economy you have philosophies when it comes to economics to people to banking the unbanked and technology like all these different groups all these all, all these different fringe groups come together and become a culture actually that's probably the best way to explain it because a culture is a culmination of different philosophies kind of coming together and forming one philosophy 
you, and you could say Bitcoin and crypto became a culture because of that, because it's, it's not just like making money. So in stocks, you have just making money, but you're taking economics, making money, politics, technology, all together with the same vision. And that's how you kind of get the, the Bitcoin philosophy and crypto philosophy. But it is, I think, very toxic to newbies because how do you expect Peter Schiff to switch his viewpoint if we're always bashing him and making fun of him? Yes, his, he's making fun of, of us crypto people, but I mean, we can try to change his mind with positivity, right? With Kumbaya. I, I mean, am I speaking too much? <laughs> but because I feel like a wise man once told me, you can catch a lot more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. And right now, the crypto community has way too much vinegar. And you aren't going to get any honeys with vinegar. If you want to get honeys, you got to bring the honey. <laughs> and uh, I'll stop there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, I mean, I'm not even sure how we got there. Oh, we're talking about J.K. Rowling. <laughs> and we, we, we definitely did get uh, off topic there. Let me, let me just find the next question here. Okay, thoughts on reserve. Reserve already covered that. Uh, it is on tokenmetrics.com and it was the third best stablecoin voted on by our community on the Tokenmetrics Moon Awards survey. Been with you since the beginning. Your growth is in this space is amazing. Thanks for sharing and helping us grow. I uh, thank you. Appreciate that. You never talk about XRP. Well, XRP hasn't really changed much. I mean, if you go back in the beginning of the show, we did cover XRP, right? XRP is the community is way too big, and p people always ask about it, and we do cover it, and it is on tokenmetrics.com. You're speaking the truth, Ian. Uh, thank you, Mickey. Um, 3K in on my Chinese homies. Uh, are you talking about Neo? <laughs> if that's the case, all right. Crypto Twitter is like Lord of the Flies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And cash, please, is it dead? Uh, unfortunately, uh, look, looking at the way things are, it definitely does look like it's dead. It looks like it hasn't really performed well. And it hasn't bounced back, unfortunately. Crypto is just like the books she wrote. She has a cult of her own. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, I've not read any of the books. I have seen one of the, the Harry Potter movies, but I haven't read the books. Vidal? Uh, what about it? Now, now, I mean, so we did have a video earlier on Vidal. So short term, we're not bullish on it. We think it's too early, too experimental, too much risk. Now... That's not to say that it won't really do well, but we, we think there's too much risk initial, uh, early on, especially via a token sale. I think it's better to wait for it to trade on exchanges for like six months to have some price action and then see if it's a good trade or investment. Okay, CZ, Binance, and Tyler Winklevoss responded. Coinbase CEO also responded to a fake JK Rowling account. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, I think that definitely was uh, entertaining as well okay so vchain vchain announced okay thoughts on vchain's news this week they announced a company developed medical data management platform to be used in hospitals in cyprus well i haven't really followed that um but if we look at vchain short term ta is bullish but it's not really our, our pick for a day trading opportunity or swing trade at the moment. Can you please post a link to the Medium article? Uh, yes. Let me see if I could find that. Okay, just give me one second because I did close that. Yeah, just give me one second here. So, okay, yeah, so I'll post a link here in the, in the in the chat. Okay, did I go through? 
not sure if there's a lag, but let me try that again. Okay, yeah, seems it's not going through. Not sure what the heck is going on here. But this comes from Adam Cochran on Twitter. So just if you just Google this, uh, Reddit jumps into loot tokens. Adam Cochran on Twitter. His Twitter is Adam Adam S Cochran. But yeah, I mean, it was really a good breakdown on what what's the currency is about, how it's behind. And guys, I haven't really shared much about this, but I mean, this this is the future. This is the future. Uh, I can't say too much, but this is the future. The future of crypto, especially American pro projects, this is the future. Uh, you know, in the past, I've talked about creating our own token. Well, actually, I mean, we're thinking of doing the same exact thing, honestly. <laughs> but uh, we're still more early stage. We're nowhere near that. But I mean, this is the future of, of issuing tokens, right? So all I can say is stay tuned, stay tuned. I mean, uh, our crypto family, our customers, stay tuned. We just landed. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll stop there. Maybe I'm doing too much. Okay, so let me know if the link is going through. I'm not sure why it's not showing up for me, but just go, just search for that. Okay, what do you see BTC dominance topping at? Um, honestly, I I don't know. Uh, BTC dominance is, is kind of it's hard to speculate. Uh, I'll probably defer that to, to Bill to do technical analysis on the, on the dominance. But I mean, I think long term, it's, it's definitely going to go down. Uh, Bitcoin is going to rise, but I think because if my projection, if, if I predict that we're going to have, if I predict that we're going to have a flippening where Ethereum surpasses Bitcoin in 10 years by, by 2030, then by definition, the dominance has to drop, right? So I think by definition, it's definitely going to drop by 50%. Probably we're thinking, I mean, oh man, the Bitcoin maximus are going to hate me for this. <laughs> but here, here comes the cult. Uh, I would say we're looking at 25 to 40% maybe. Um, but actually, yeah, I would say lower than 40% is probably in my, my prediction in 10 years. I mean, because, I mean, we're very bullish on Ethereum. Uh, but uh, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but we could also be right. So take it take it with a grain of salt. That's kind of just our, our take on it. Uh, Bitcoin dominance. Now, I guess the question, if you go back to your question, we would have to put a time frame on this. But I mean, I think Bitcoin is going to go up, but not as much as altcoins. So if we go into a bull market, by definition, altcoins are going to moon and the Bitcoin dominance will drop because I don't envision a world where Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency going up in a bull market and altcoins are not going up, right? Because people go to Bitcoin in bear markets. But as we get DeFi and stablecoins and that those get more widely adopted, Bitcoin might not be the only uh, currency to be used as a hedge versus risk. All right. <laughs> What do I think about Omar Baum's tweet, Crypto News, refusing to review tokenmetrics? I mean, hey, so I did respond. We basically just offered him, hey, we'll give you access to tokenmetrics. Don't have to pay for it. Try it out. You know, talk about it with your community. And he then used that as a means to, 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 to get clout on Twitter and virtual signal. And I mean, hey, Obviously, he's entitled to his own opinion, his own viewpoint. But I mean, I, th I think that was definitely disrespectful to get a private email, even an email that technically says, do not share this with anybody else. I mean, because all most emails typically have that, right? That that privacy disclaimer. But I mean, no plans to just to go, to go legal on him per se, right? But I mean, hey, at the end of the day, the results will speak for themselves, right? So token metrics' performance will speak for itself. And we'll just... We'll let our performance do the talking, really, right? And we've had our best week to date, as mentioned earlier in the show. And we're about to have our best month this year, 
and it might even be better than our month our, our launch month because typically when you launch you have like that big spike then you come back down to earth then you slow gradual growth but i mean during this pandemic business is booming i mean so first of all thank you to crypto family to everybody who joined uh, thank you so much for the support we appreciate it please bear with us customer support has been swamped and i mean it's basically growing pains right we've had growing pains we're dealing with it i mean it's always good to have growing pains because that means business is booming people love the product the they see value in it. If we had no no customer complaints, if we had no people joining the platform, then that would mean that we're working on something people don't see value in. So the fact that customer support cannot handle the requests coming in means that we definitely have hit something valuable. And this is just the beginning. The best is yet to come. We've been listening to your feedback. Um, so we're just, ex we're, we're so excited. Okay, so thank you to everybody, even our affiliates. I believe we we now have over five hundred affiliates. I don't. I know we, we passed one hundred uh, last week, but I think it might be over five hundred now. And I mean, so business has been great. Uh, we're just working day and week trying to make the platform better for you. Uh, stay tuned. We do plan to to launch token metrics indexes indices. Uh, hopefully by next month. And we think if that works, oh man, oh man, oh man. I mean, because this is what people have been waiting for. Because now we can actually track and show you the performance and how much money we're making with our ratings via the indices, right? So we kind of have been building it step by step through MVPs. But if we can show people, so for example, uh, so here, let, okay, I don't think I can pull this up here because it's not on my because I'm in a different browser. But yeah, let me see if I can pull this up here, actually. Give me one second. So our price prediction index in the, in the one month, the ROI, I mean, I was, I myself could not believe it. <laughs> okay? I cannot quite frankly believe it. To a point I was telling my data scientist, I was like, how could you mess this up? I was basically yelling at him. Well, not not yelling, but I was, I was I was like, "Please double check the calculations. Like this seems wrong," because uh, the the ROI for the first month for the price prediction index was seven hundred fifteen percent. That's a seven x return. The price prediction index was a seven x return, and I'm thinking like, because the index begin in, in our testing begins at one hundred, and it had gone to like seven hundred. So actually, sorry. That's a six x return if you pick pick up the initial, right? I'm like, how do we get a six x return in a month? I mean, like, I know our, our stuff is good, but is it that good? I mean, so I was skeptical, but uh, after talking to him on our call, he basically went through the, the 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 coins the model was holding, right? So for those those who don't know, the price prediction index we're we're creating takes every single month. So we'll have it from for weekly and monthly. We'll take the best we'll take the cryptocurrencies that have the highest predicted gains or ROI percentage wise for that month based on the price prediction model, right? So for example, it could be if it has some crypto cryptocurrency has a predicted gain of 50% in a month and that's number one. And then, so it basically takes all the crypto, all the cryptos in our system, sorts them based on which ones have the highest price predicted gain and we take the top 10 and create an index out of that. So people have been asking, how do we how do we make money with the price prediction index without having to go through and research every single coin? Well, the index is gonna do that. So going through the index, I was like, what coin has gone up that much? And then for all the people who've been commenting on, the, on our live stream the last few weeks, guess what coin it was? Guess what coin it was? It was Hex. <laughs> Richard Hart's hex was in the price prediction index. It was one of the top 10 coins in there. And because for those who don't know, I mean, hex has performed very well. Now, we're still not bullish on it long term. But with that being said, if we go here, right, our price prediction index is purely for trading. It's purely for speculation. It's purely for people who are holding for the short term, right? 
so looking at this here, this shows it's basically done at 38x, but I think even this might be wrong. I'm not sure. But if we go here to the technical analysis, actually, yeah, I should be. So if we go here to the technical analysis for hex, right? It's gone from 0 0.001 Satoshi to a high of 0 0.006. Right, this was in a span of a month, right? So I mean, we we were skeptical, right? And and we still are skeptical on on this coin, right? Long term, right? Obviously, not not bullish on t technology and fundamentals. However, if you are a short term trader looking to speculate, right? So because with our price prediction index, as I was mentioning, right, we take the top ten coins that, based on the machine learning, have the highest predicted ROI for that month. And we're, all the other indexes we have have been performing like between 20 and 40% in a month. So we were shocked when our models for the price prediction index were showing the model made 600% in a month. I mean, to, I, I got angry at, at, at our data scientists. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like something has to be wrong with the data, but the price prediction index, I mean, despite all what people are saying about scams and whatever with hacks, I mean, we, we, we are not bullish on it long term. But, I mean, if you're, if you're a trader and it says, man, it's going to go up. I mean, so, hey, congrats to anybody who made money on it. Because at the end of the day, we're different from crypto Twitter. We're not here looking to fall in love with how we make our money. Money is money. I mean, right? So, and if you're a trader, I mean, that, that should be your, your philosophy, right? So we're not saying go out there and buy Hex and hold for 10 years. No, no. We're saying if you're a speculator, I mean, putting a small part of your portfolio if the technical analysis shows it's bullish and the price prediction models show it as going up like 100% or whatever. I mean, because quite frankly, I don't own any hex, didn't, didn't plan to, but we did tell people if you had Bitcoin, it was free money. That, that, that hex claim, that was a free airdrop. So, I mean, that part made sense. But we were shocked to see that our price prediction index had hex in there and it performed very well. Now, one thing to add, though, as a caveat, it is very illiquid, right? So obviously, no wells are really trading it. And I mean, you have to understand, this could be the next BitConnect. Now, obviously, I do know Richard. He's a good, he's a good friend. Uh, and now, Richard, uh, no offense. I'm not saying this coin is the next BitConnect, but, right, it is a new coin. And new coins can pump and dump, right? And it is very illiquid. So let me see if I can pull up here. Uniswap exchange so because if we go to, to here actually it's uniswap vision i think is the is the website okay let me just give me one second here as i as i pull it up here yeah yeah not sure what's going on here, actually. Okay, I think I found it here. Uniswap.info, I believe is their website. Okay, yeah, here we go. So it is the most traded token on Uniswap, which is a decentralized exchange. So volume is 10 million, which is pretty surprising, right? So for anybody, so really, this is the only way to get it besides some, some other exchanges. Now, if we, if we go to CoinMarketCap, let me see what other exchanges, because I think they did add Hex on here, finally. So this shows volume of 4 million. So it is on Hotbit. Okay, I had no idea it got onto Hotbit. Okay, Hotbit, and yeah, I mean, so if I was... A trader, the only exchanges I would trust were Uniswap and Hotbit. The other ones I haven't really used. Uniswap I haven't used either, but I, we all know it's it's one of the premier DeFi platforms. And Hotbit is uh, the one I, I have used. I, actually, I, I sold my Phantasma on this exchange. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I've used that one for. But I mean, I we were pretty shocked that the price prediction models. Now let's see what they have to say for for Hex right now. So, okay, now they're basically saying the price is going to crash. <laughs> well, 
but I mean, look at this. So beginning April, the price prediction models basically were almost lock and step. And now here they did go higher than the actual price. Then they recovered. Then they went up again, right? So the model did perform pretty well from here all the way to here. So this is where that, that ROI came from. Now, however, the models are predicting that the price is going to crash all the way down to $0.03 cents and then be stagnant there. So really, this trading opportunity is over, for now at least, until, until mid-June, maybe end of June. Right? And if we go to technical analysis, it's now neutral, so it's not bearish anymore. But I mean, I myself was quite frankly shocked that the model picked us up and outperformed all the other models. So I mean, think once again, that's why you have to be an independent thinker. You can't just be a militant Bitcoin maximalist because imagine if you made money on this, right? Whether it ends up being a scam or not, you cashed out, you, you bought your house, you paid your bills, you went on vacation, right? So, I mean, because at the end of the day, if, you, if you're trading and you know you're trading something that is volatile and could be a shit coin, as long as you know that and you have your, your parachute on and you're, you're ready to hop out of the plane before it burns down to the ground, then, then you're Gucci, okay? So just to kind of recap, I'm not saying I'm bullish on Hex, no. Long term, no. Obviously, I've shown you the score. We are not bullish on it long term, right? So I, I, that means I don't want to see any comments saying I'm trying to shell Hex. I'm not trying to do that, right? Okay. Now, we go above and beyond because our, our job, our full-time job is to, is to do crypto research. So we don't believe in lazy labeling of products saying this is a scam. I mean, very rarely do we call a project an outright scam because we have looked at the code and everything. We would, rather, we would rather say this is a horrible project than say it's a scam. Because a scam means that they're trying to take your money. A project can have good intentions, but still be a bad project. Now, Richard, no offense if you're watching this, uh, but basically what I'm saying is if you had Bitcoin and you got free hacks, you Gucci, right? Because that, that's why we were able to say something like that to people. Because imagine if you had 10 BTC, but you thought this, this, this was a scam, and you you missed out on your free money just because you thought it was a scam. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I love free money. <laughs> scam or no scam. <laughs> okay, I mean, because Bitcoin Cash, people are militant about Bitcoin Cash, but I didn't, I didn't have a dog in a fight. I had my Bitcoin, this was back in 2017, right? I had my, my Bitcoin, put it on Binance. Binance gave me free Bitcoin Cash. That it pumped. I sold that. As soon as possible, never looked back, and I mean, and the rest is history. I mean, so when I hear people talking about Bitcoin Cash this and Bitcoin Cash that, all I know is Bitcoin Cash made me money. It was a good trade. That's all I view it as. It was a good trade. We're not here to get re religious with how we make our money. Right? I don't care whether it was big, whether they're ruining Bitcoin or whatever. I mean, it was just a trade. I mean, don't fall in love with your trades. That's that, that's, that's like one of the first rules of trading. Don't fall in love with a trade because otherwise you, you, you're going to lose. I mean, because I never viewed Bitcoin Cash as a long-term hold and we don't view Hex as a long-term hold. If we do get in, we haven't got, gotten in, but I'm saying based on the, on the models saying in the last one month, it was just purely as a speculative trade. So you get in, you have your entry point, you have your stop loss, you have your, your take profit. And man, I mean, that, that index shocked us that it outperformed all the other indexes. Because the other indexes were, were, were basically getting 20 to 40% in a month. And when this got over 600%, I was like, oh man. But anyway, am I crazy? Is it heresy to talk about hex? Which people call it scam? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's see. Scott says, but a Rolex on Hex. <laughs> hey, scam or no scam? That Rolex is real. That, that right there is tangible. Because, I mean, quite, quite honestly, just think about it. Okay? 
How many of us have invested in a cryptocurrency, made money on it, taken profits, got an out, and that cryptocurrency ended up tanking, right? It ended up going to zero or close to zero. But guess what? You got out with your parachute before the plane crashed. And guess what? You took your money and ran. You didn't look back. You, you don't really care whether it was a scam or no, no scam. It was a trade for you, basically, right? I mean, that's why I, that's what people are doing with IEOs. People are basically flipping IEOs. And after they make the money, they don't, they don't really care what happens afterwards. Now, the, the issue, however, right, kind of playing devil's advocate, are the people who get in at the end, right? So in a way, that's where the whole pump and dump Ponzi scheme comes from, right? But, I mean, that same thing happens with every asset that gets traded. I mean, if you look at technical analysis on any asset, whether stocks, I mean, even Bitcoin. I mean, do people call big, I mean, just think about it. People outside of crypto call Bitcoin a scam, right? So if we think of, of this as kind of as religions, it's like saying you only, only believe in, in one God, but all other religions that believe in multiple gods are, are, are false, right? They're false prophets. But then also forgetting that there are other people. So basically you're an atheist when it comes to multiple gods, but then you also have other people who are atheists on all, all gods, right? Uh, sorry to kind of use that example, but I'm, I hope that makes sense because Bitcoin maximalists call all altcoin scams. But to forget that there are other people, the no coiners, who call all cryptocurrency scams. <laughs> okay, so they aren't really any better than them, right? So in a way, they're kind of in the same boat with us. And but I think if you if you're trading, and you know you, this is purely a short term trade, you're in it for like a day to a week to maybe a month or less, you cannot fall in love with the trade because when you're trading and speculating, you know you're speculating. You aren't really in it for the long term. So in a way, you don't, don't even care about the fundamentals. You're just there looking at at the charts, looking at where it's going. You're charting it. Once it, once it tops, you get out. Just riding that roller coaster up, and I feel like the the tox the toxic the toxic behavior from all the people who are in the cult of crypto, they miss that some people are here just to speculate. Some people are here just to trade. They don't they don't give a flying hoot about what they're holding. They are just in it to make the money, right? Then they're, they're not in this for the tech. They end this for the money. So you kind of have to understand that perspective as well. Right, so that's why I don't really fault anybody who has made money. Right, somebody just mentioned they bought a, Ro a Ro Rolex. I mean, hey, congratulations. You made your money with, you bought a Rolex. I mean, I don't care what trade that was, whether it was Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Hex. I mean, a winning trade is a winning trade. Don't forget that. Don't let anybody guilt you into not making money on, on a trade because because they they believe in the philosophy of, on something, right? If anything, I would say the people who have that kind of mindset don't make money, right? Those are the pe people who blindly huddle to zero, <laughs> okay? And one thing about us is we're not here to huddle to zero. I mean, we make our hypothesis on a trade or investment, right? We say, okay, this is the data, whether technical analysis or fundamental analysis, we get in. If it goes our way, we take profits and we keep on riding into the sunset to the moon and beyond. But if things don't go our way or if the party is over, we take profits and get out. We don't stay there and fall in love. I mean, perfect example, Icon. Icon made a 100x on that. Wabi made a 100x, almost 140x return, 150x return, I think. Made money on it. But guess what? When all of crypto came crumbling and crashing down, nobody mattered. It didn't matter whether you're an icon, Wabi, Bitcoin, everything came down 80%, 90%. Did I sit there and fall in love with icon and huddle to all the way? No. I mean, because I got into icon at 12 cents. I wrote icon all the way to $12. I mean, talk about memories for a lifetime. Then I, I sold all the way up gradually and all the way down. And I sold everything at when Icon was around $2 or something, like $2.30 or something, I believe. And guess what? All of crypto Twitter said, oh, man, Ian is stupid. He's, he's sold the bottom. You know, he's, he's, he, Ian is capitulating. But guess what? I just zipped my mouth, took my money. 
because at the end of the day, it's never wrong to lock in a profit. Right? Let me let me repeat that again. It's never wrong to lock in a profit. So I zip my mouth. Well, actually, sorry. I, I did clap back on some people on Twitter. <laughs> but it was minor. Took my money, went, went on a crypto world tour, came back a year later. Icon price, 20 cents. <laughs> I mean, I, I should have just taken a, a screenshot of those tweets and just replied back saying, this didn't age well. Right, but you know what? I didn't do that. I was, I was like, you know what? People are going through a tough times. Market, we're in a bear market. You know, they probably just kind of learned the lesson. At the end of the day, I mean, don't don't try to follow the crowd, that the hype, especially on crypto Twitter. I mean, I'm on Twitter here and there, but I'm not really that active anymore because it's toxic. It's basically herd mentality. And for anybody out there who's read Nietzsche, I mean, first of all, a genius, one of the best. I think my favorite philosopher. I think me personally, the best philosopher of all time, he has something called the herd mentality. And if you go on crypto Twitter, it is the perfect example of herd mentality. Let me see if I can find a quote by Nietzsche on the herd mentality here. Because if you understand this, oh man, I mean, you will, you will truly understand crypto because markets in the way are the same way, right? So let me see if I can find the quote. Just give me a second. Okay, so here I'm finding some pictures. Um, okay, I pulled up Google here. So he has a quote here. Insanity in individuals is something rare. But in groups, parties, nations, and epochs, it is the rule. Okay, let me see if I can find a better one. So collective fear, actually, no, that's not Nietzsche. Uh, but I mean, I definitely recommend you read some Nietzsche. Nietzsche, Nietzsche for your life is good. It, it helps you become a free thinker, right? Because at least people ask me how am I so independent or I guess why do I believe so much in my independent views? I mean, from just learning more from people like Nietzsche, right? Now, he had a, a better quote that I do want to find. So books I recommend, Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, the World to Power is, is a good book as well. It's even here on WikiQuote. Okay, sorry, just give me one second here. But anyway, I'll just stop there because because I have been kind of rambling too long. But I mean, at the end of the day, you want to go against the grain. Don't just follow what people blindly say on Twitter. And you have to be willing to stand by own convictions. Sometimes even if it's just you, right? Because I mean, so many people said Hex was a scam. And yes, it may end up being a scam. I mean, I'm not saying the pump and dump is over, but I'm saying just because something does not look good, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're just purely trading something, why do you care, right? I mean, you just in a, if you're a day trader, do you, do you just say, oh, Bitcoin's a scam, Ethereum's a scam, Maker's a scam? You just get in, stop loss, profit, boom, okay? But, but with that being said, I mean, be careful out there. Don't get wrecked, uh, especially with Hex, because it is a risky cryptocurrency. But I mean, you get to see some people made money on it. Now, I still would not advise me personally putting any money in it, even though it's kind of ironic what I've just said. What, what I did say, if, if you go back to all the other videos I've made about Hex, was take the free money. Because an airdrop is an airdrop. And if you have 10 BTC and somebody's going to give you 10 Bitcoin worth of free money, I don't see in what world you would not take that money. Okay? I mean, and then if, if, you, if, you've, if you've already sold that and made even more money, if you made like, what, a 6x return on that, I mean, scam or no scam, I mean, that's the best scam ever. <laughs> I mean, if you got free money and that free money did a 6x, I mean, that's called charity. I mean, Richard Hart, Richard Hart is about to turn into Jesus. <laughs> Hex Jesus. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Be careful. 
you know, once again, be careful. There's so many risks in crypto, especially with Hex. But hey, if you have that free money, cash out, cash out. Okay, let me check in here with the, with the comments because I know I have been rambling. Ian is very transparent. If not, he would have been beaten up by now. <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> Thank you, Iron Man. Did you get the free Hex airdrop? Uh, no, I did not because uh, I missed the... Because there was a deadline to it. Uh, I th so I missed that one. And then uh, at that point in time, I did not have any Bitcoin. The Bitcoin I had, I had cashed out to, to help finance token metrics. Facts, well said. Thoughts on Bobby Lee's crypto wallet? Good investment or not? Uh, actually, I have it here somewhere. So, I mean, so I think it... it I think it's good, honestly, All right? This is the wallet for those who have not seen it. Let me let me zoom in here. I mean, it's pretty cool. I haven't used, used it yet because I've been here locked down in quarantine. But for anybody out there who wants to kind of have a physical way to to have the Bitcoin, I think it's cool. Um, now, he, 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 he did give this to me uh, for free, right? So, I mean, no cost to me. But I, I think he said... They're what, fifty bucks or one hundred and fifty? I'm not sure. Now the one I I did like, which which he didn't give me, was was a gold one. Oh man, the gold plated, because th this is hard. Do you hear that? Solid. Now, because I do have my my Amex. Um, let me pull up my Amex. I can show this because I I I, I closed it. <laughs> so even if people. Get, 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 get my card number. They can't really use it because <laughs> it's closed. Um, where, where is that? I have too many cards. Uh, one thing you will learn about me. Actually, uh, I don't have it anymore. I guess I did th throw it away when I closed it. Damn. Uh, that sucks. Would have been nice to to have something to show. But, I mean, I was basically just going to show the, the Amex Platinum card. Great card. I mean, I like it a lot, but I'm in the process of trying to consolidate my debt and just cut away credit cards. We're going into global recession, so just trying to just straight cash on me, okay? <laughs> I mean, because in a bull run, that platinum Amex that will get you wrecked. <laughs> For those who don't know, uh, the platinum Amex Amex card is a card that really doesn't almost has no limit. Now, it's not quite the, the black Amex or the Centurion Amex, which has, like, really no limit. But, I mean, that card, during the bull run, I've spent as much, mainly, I would say almost every all the expenses were for the business because it was a business Amex. But I spent over 200 grand, and, and regularly I was spending over 100 grand on, on that card because it's, it's a charge card, right? But uh, after a while, when, the, when, the, when the, the bear market keeps on lasting longer than you anticipate, and Bitcoin crashes and things won't, are not as good because there isn't really a limit on it. I mean, typically they they let you spend a lot of money, so it's it's very hard to spend more than two hundred grand because this was, this was during a crypto world tour, the team, the staff, and everything. But I mean, it, it got me away from my my principles of being frugal, right? Because uh, it, for anybody out there, even if you listen to other people like like Dave Ramsey, right? Spending a credit card disassociates you from thinking you're actually spending money because it, in a way, it, it does not seem real, right? So I want to go back to spending only money I actually have and just planning better, right? Because I'm like, if we're going to be in a recession for, who knows, on average, it lasts 12 to 13 months. I mean, because when I saw everything tanking, I'm like, imagine the worst of the worst, I have to plan for Armageddon. So I have to make sure I have cash, I have this. You know, can't really be spending credit card money like like it's going out of style. But that card was nice, but this one, solid, solid card. Now, he's not paid me, he's not sponsored me. Now, this is a free card. I, I, he, he gave me to, to just kind of use and try out. But I mean, I don't think I'll be using this much because I do have a BitPay card which I got back in 2017. 
I've only used that a handful of times, but I've never used it since then. I haven't used it in over two years. And the main reason is because you have to transfer your Bitcoin to the card and then you have to sell your Bitcoin and then you, you spend the dollars. And, and then there was also a limit on how much you could hold on the card. You could only hold like 25 grand. So it was just too cumbersome to use. Now, I think the ideal Bitcoin card would be a card that lets you store crypto. And when you spend it, it automatically sells for you. And then boom, it, it gives you the, it uh, makes up the difference, right? I think, I think there are some cards that are, that are trying to do that. But I think that's the way to go, because if you have to go and manually sell your Bitcoin on there, and then the next thing is, I don't like selling Bitcoin. Now, the only time I do sell it is when I have to fund my business, right? But it's never a, a good site. It's always something I don't like doing, it's especially when people, like when, when we work with vendors and they ask to be paid in Bitcoin, I try to avoid as much as possible because we all know Bitcoin is going to go up. <laughs> so the last thing you want to do is pay something in Bitcoin. I mean, and then years down the road, you're like, man, that guy has like 100 grand now. <laughs> but anyway, let me let me check in and see how we're doing. Oh, man, it's been three hours. Yeah, I remember you when you came to here to Pattaya, Thailand. <laughs> you're based in Thailand? Nice. Hey, I'm due to come back to Thailand. I mean, after this, this lockdown, I need to just escape. I've been here just grinding, working away. I think most people have, right? You just need to escape. And I've been looking at Brazil. I've been looking at Thailand as well. Um, I'm actually doing business. We just signed a marketing campaign with, with a marketing company, company based in Thailand for crypto. People we were working with when, when I was working with Qcoin. So they're based in they're actually based in Pattaya, Thailand. And uh, so maybe... I, I'll come back to Thailand. I mean, they have been inviting me back. Um, probably, this time is probably in the, in the summertime, I believe. But I'm just, I, I, I cannot wait to start traveling again. Because traveling just cures the soul. Traveling is good, is great for your soul. Okay, all right. Let me go back to the AMA because we have totally gotten off track. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is, it is good though, right? That's the whole point of being live. Okay, so back to, we went from Nietzsche to Hex <laughs> to a bunch of, to Omar. <laughs> okay, um, how would a second wave of COVID ID or another pandemic shortly after play out? Some are saying we self-quarantine until fall 2021 or until we have a vaccine. Would love your thoughts, thanks. Um, obviously I'm not in the pandemic business, not really an expert on it, but I think if a second wave comes, we can't be locked down again. I mean, cause the global economy has been affected way too much. So I think if we get a second gust of wind of the pandemic, I think what's going to happen is most countries will just follow what's happening in Sweden, where they'll just try to build up herd immunity. They'll be like, you know what? We can't just lock down for two years because... I mean, the unemployment in America is already at record levels, right? It's over, over 15%, I believe. So there's no way we can continue like this for two years and even globally. So I think what's going to happen is we'll just follow what's happening in Sweden. Uh, China has opened up and so has Hong Kong and some other places, and they have good strategies of doing it. So if we do open up, it will just be social distancing. Remote work will be the way to go. I mean, so this is the future. I don't think it's really going to go back. I mean, the the cat is out of the bag, pun intended, because I mean, most people in crypto were already working remotely. It was kind of most people in crypto, at least the ones I know, already had that digital nomad lifestyle, especially the traders who travel and trade. Right? For example, like Wolf of Poloniex. Uh, go watch the interview I had with him on on Hundred X Show. I mean, he's basically he's he's making six figures, seven figures, traveling the world, just trading on his laptop. That's like the crypto lifestyle, crypto investor trading lifestyle. And I mean, our team has been working re remotely since I quit IBM in 2017. We would just work by taking calls online through Zoom, Google Hangouts, traveling to conferences. 
so the future is here. The future is here. I mean, if anything, what I do regret on is if I had money, if, if I had disposable money, I would have invested in Zoom because I, I've been using Zoom since 2017. I was bullish on it. And I think Zoom did show up on one of those equity sites, I think shares post or equity Zen. So I think there was a, a round to buy zoom, I believe. Now, let me see if I can pull that up here. Cause one of those where employees share their stock. I mean, uh, where employees go to go to sell their stock. Cause I think there might've been, let me take a look here. Yeah, so this is, let me close this. So this is equity Zen. Now these sites are only for qualified investors, accredited investors. Basically, if you, if you, if you make, in the US, if you make over 200 grand, or if you have net worth of, of over a million, it's always changing. But basically, you have to be rich, right? So they have lots of companies on here, pre-market. It's, it's, it's kind of like private sales for, for IPOs. So this is their page on Zoom. Now, why do they keep on giving me this pop-up? Now, I do have the newsletter. I, ha I did make an account on here, but I, I personally have still not used it yet. All right, but basically, some of the rounds they have... Okay, get, yeah, so right now they have QB. They have Airbnb. I mean, talk about Airbnb and SpaceX. Imagine investing in those before... The IPO. They have Barstool Sports. And actually, I'm not sure if all these are investable. These might just be. Actually, they might be. All right. So imagine investing in Airbnb. All right. So DraftKings, Grab, Reddit, uh, Lime, Lemonade, TransferWise, Casper. Didn't Casper IPO? Acorns, Circle. Circle is a crypto one. So actually, let's, let's see what they have for crypto. Blockchain, okay. So, okay, I'm not sure if they had Zoom. because It's not popping up here. So that's one of the sites uh, I did see that on. The other one was Shares Post. Let me see if they had this one. Okay, so, okay, so Zoom stock, yeah. So they have it here as well. Now, so all these sites, the way they work is you buy directly from employees. So, I mean, that's one regret I had. It was if I had money, I would have put some money in that. Uh, then, because Zoom, Zoom is here to stay. And now I know lots of people say it has privacy issues. And yes, it does. Because uh, it's not really, really full end-to-end -end encry encryption. But I, I'm not really seeing any good open source alternatives that can handle the scale Zoom does. I know Signal is one, but Signal is really just more for one-to-one -one and, and small groups. It's not really meant for like having like 100 people on at the same time. Um, I have been looking for open source versions, uh, alternatives for, for web conferencing, right? Because I love open source, the privacy, especially, especially for the operational security, it's, it's good and it's the encryption. But nothing has really come out yet that can rival Zoom. That's also open source. Now, Netflix has done well. Amazon has done well. Um, what else? Roku. Roku is, has done fairly well. I'm very bullish on Roku. In a way, I could just kind of give you my stocks. Now, this is not based on any kind of in-depth research, just from companies I like that I personally use that do well. Uh, but I've not looked at their financials. I would definitely recommend you do that before. Just take, so take this with a, a huge pile of salt. So for companies that I like that are good for the re remote future, because that's where things are going. It's not going away anytime soon. Zoom, Roku, uh, Netflix, Amazon, those are more safer plays. Instacart, man, I've been a user of Instacart forever. I've not gone grocery shopping in like probably three years. Maybe even longer. I mean, rarely, rarely do I go grocery shopping. Okay, so I, I did go on occasion only if, if like my, if I'm like helping out my mom. But for myself, right? I got Instacart 
I have never looked back. Instacart is a game changer. I'll tell you why. Because, y yes, you can go on there and order st groceries online. That's not what, what what's a game changer, right? Because I pay like 150 bucks, 200 bucks a year for their premium account and plan to basically have like free, to have almost no fees, I think, on the on the on on each order but what's a game changer is like let's say it's a sunday like 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 today i'll go on there it has everything i ordered from from the past i can just quickly go through and say reorder the same thing add a few things so i do all my shopping in about 15 minutes because i can just go through and as i use the, the product even more i have all my past orders there just say add past orders to cart add a few extra things and they can all be at different stores, right? So not only do I already have my shopping list, but I can order stuff from Costco, from Safeway, from Giant, three different stores at the same time, at the same damn time as a uh, future says, right? So this is why it's big because the economy is a scale because imagine having to drive, because for us here in, in Maryland, driving to Costco is like 20 minutes, driving there, then shopping, then driving to, to back then when they had Whole Foods, right? Whole Foods might be 10, 20 minutes away. They're driving to Giant for some, something else. So all these different things, you might spend a whole day or half of your day just shopping for stuff. Because not every, because especially if, you, if you're trying to eat healthy and buy particular things, not every store has it. But with Instacart, I can place my order in less than 15 minutes. They'll have three shoppers go out to three different stores at the same time. Shop for my things at the same time and deliver them. Uh, no, sorry, shop, shop for my things at different times and deliver at different times. I mean, it kind of is a scale because three people shopping for my groceries as opposed to one person, me, three times as fast. So paying some money here and there for Instacart to use it, I've never gone back. I've never gone back. I mean, that's why. And I think I did see they were available on on one of these platforms. Let me see here. Let me see if we can search for Instacart. Okay, it is not on Equity Zen. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so it is popping up here on Shares Post Instacart. So founded in 2012, over almost two two billion dollars in funding. Right, obviously good, good investors. Right, Combinator, Anderson Horowitz, Coastal Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, Sequoia, Funders Club. Now I know, uh, I believe Amazon also invested in, in in them, and Amazon is one of the competitors. So I mean, I don't have money now to be investing in this because I mean, almost all, all my money is going in, into token metrics. But if you told me, hey, here, build a portfolio without doing any thorough research in terms of looking at the books like Warren Buffett, just looking at companies I know and understand and I use that I think have potential. I would have told you Zoom, Instacart, Roku, Amazon, obviously, Netflix, those are still safe bets. But I mean, those are the ones that really come to mind. Um, let me know, any, any, any other companies you think will do well when it comes to the future of remote work and how, thing, how everything is kind of... So I, I read this online, the future Post -pan in a post-pandemic world is really like this. We'll have really big companies like the Amazons and Netflix of the worlds, and we'll have very small boutique, like the middle. That might just get completely annihilated. Now, there may still be a few survivors, but it'll be very hard to compete. And I mean, I think we're kind of getting that because look at restaurants. Rest restaurants are now really having to shift even colleges are having to shift. People are now getting used to doing things online through Zoom, through through other things, and I know I know also people who are now trying to change the entire business models to make money online. So, so I know some people who were videographers who were, were making money from filming. Well, now in the pandemic, you can't really film, so they have to change the business model where they're now doing more remote editing, right? Editing videos for companies online, and that might be something they keep on doing post pandemic. So, I mean, everyone has been affected. Um, if you're in a business that has been affected, we definitely uh, do sympathize with you. 
right? Our, our condolences. We hope you bounce back. We hope you figure, figure, figure out a way to make money. We're here for you. Crypto family in the house every single Sunday, 6 p.m., 6 to 9 p.m. But this is this is over three and a half hours. So this is this has been one of the longer live streams. But hey, we're just flowing, vibing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let us let me know what you think. Any other companies you think will do well in a post pandemic world? Let me know in the comments down below. All right. Well, I've been rambling a lot. Let me stop there. You know, uh, I'm about to go watch Billions. If you if you haven't watched that show, great show on Showtime. Going to go watch that. Actually, probably going to have dinner first. I've not had dinner at all. <laughs> I'm still doing my intermittent fasting. I'm going to have dinner, watch some Billions, and just unwind. Unwind. Okay? But with that being said. We just landed down. on the moon in the lab. Thank you, Crypto Family. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Token metrics has been blowing up, but because of you, because of all of you, each and every single one of you, thank you to all our customers. You know, uh, we, we've, we've also been ramping up. We've been sending out newsletters almost every, every, every weekday. I would say on average about four to five newsletters a week. And I, you know, cause this is when you guys need research the most. And we've been, we've been trying to be here for you. We'll keep on staying here for you. I mean, even these live streams, sometimes I don't feel like doing these live streams. Like last week, I almost canceled the live stream, but I'm like, how can Ian Bellina cancel a live stream a day before the Bitcoin halving? <laughs> I was like, I don't care if you, if you're on a on a on a hospital bed, if if you're if if you're locked up or whatever, if you can't breathe, I was like, the crypto world would not let you live that down. <laughs> They'd be like, when we want to do the most, you are not there for us. So I told myself, Ian, it does not matter how you feel. This is a Bitcoin halving. Get your butt up and do this live stream. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we've had a nice streak and YouTube is now seeing that. Now our channel has been growing very well. So thank you for all the support. And with that being said, please share, like, retweet with all your community, all your crypto family. I mean, we're here and this for the long haul. And as we like to say, the moon is not actually no, hold on let me put on the music the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond until next time everybody crypto family thank you so much i'll see you next time hasta la vista Just landed on the moon in the Lambo. You feel good, don't it? Good, don't it? All right. We just landed on the moon in the Lambo. Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle. We'll be coming back to you with the samples. Our predictions coming soon with a halo We just landed on the moon in the Lambo Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle We'll be coming back to you with the samples Our predictions coming soon with a halo We just landed on the moon in the Lambo Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle We'll be coming back to you with the samples Our predictions coming soon with a halo yeah. the moon yeah. with the angels Landed on the moon in the Lambo Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle We'll be coming back to you with the samples Our predictions coming soon with a halo The moon and the angels Made man who died, read the game plan They can't stand, we fly where they
the game lame Lifestyle, so good I gotta write that Try and doubt, don't make me pull my drive out Made man, who died, read the game plan They can't stand, we flying where they can't land Lifestyle, I never gotta lie about Try and doubt, don't make me pull my drive out Yeah, I wasn't always a celebrity Had to do right till I left you a legacy Blood, sweat, and tears on this trail like a Cherokee Business had a mission like Apollo and so heavenly Mercy a lot, go walk a lot of with the leather seats How should I roam from my home through the seven seas The one day this wasn't built, I'm not Romulus Grind to you sitting on a bill with no monikers This for my mama, I turned up with no thermometers I strain day after night like the Andromeda I know what time it is looking in the sky to lift my spirits And my spirits I don't whine, I just grind and get Yeah, trust in the process is essential Studying the chart should be the object of your mental Make the most to get the laser focused like you diplo Keep a couple secrets in the tales of the crypto Keep a couple secrets in the tales of the crypto Make the most to get the laser focused like you diplo Yeah, trust in the process is essential Studying my chart should be the object of your mental the moon and the Lambo Taking pictures with the zoom and the angle We'll be coming back to you with the samples So good, I gotta write that. Try and doubt, don't make me pull my drive out. Made man, who died, read the game plan. They can't stand, we fly where they can't land. Lifestyle, I never gotta lie about. Try and doubt, don't make me pull my drive out. Yeah. Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Disclaimer. Tokenmetrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker-dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Tokenmetrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com.